you in part by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet. Ajax Mobile Home. They trade for anything of value. No mother-in-laws, please. Safeway, America's favorite food store. And by American Toyota, New Mexico's number one Toyota dealership. A pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California, where tonight the University of New Mexico Lobos will meet the San Diego State Aztecs. This will be the 14th meeting on the college gridiron between the two institutions. It's been a season of frustration for both the Lobos and the San Diego State University Aztecs. I'm Jim Lawwell, along with Gary Ness. And Gary, when you talk about San Diego State University, for the past four years, in fact, you talk about their fine quarterback, Todd Santos. Well, Todd Santos is the most prolific passer in the history of the NCAA, already over 11,000 yards. And he will be trying to tie one last record, that is Jim McMahon's 17 game of 300 or better yards per game passing mark. And he's going to try to tie that tonight. After the game, we understand that San Diego State will retire his jersey. The Lobos have fallen to 104th in the country defensively. Now, the combination of a great passer and the lowly ranked defensive unit, what do you do? Well... You have to get the ball to Terrence Mathis, who is almost back to 100%. And the Lobos' only scoring weapon, or best scoring weapon, is Terrence Mathis. And I look for him to hide him in different formations and try to get the ball to him in several different ways. Will the Lobos have any special surprises for San Diego State tonight? Well, they've used the uh, Donald Duck offense, or what's been called the Polecat offense in the past. They've also gone without huddles uh, to try to mix things up. And... There's no reason to hold any of that back. We might see some of that this evening. Well, be it Donald Duck or Porky Pig, whatever it may be, we're going to be back in just a moment and kick it off as the University of New Mexico squares off with the San Diego State Aztecs. We'll be right back in just one moment. Escape to the open road, man, it cannot be. Enjoy the good life of tomorrow today. Make the great outdoors your home, man, it cannot be. The end of the rainbow, just a moment away. The American dream is the chance to be free. The good for the good life is waiting for you at American RV. We can make your dream come probably heard that Coors isn't pasteurized. Well, it's true. It's also true that Coors is the only major brewer who won't pasteurize any of their beer. The reason? Taste. See, when you pasteurize something, you heat it. And heating hurts the taste of beer. So Coors purifies without heat. That helps make Coors a little less heavy, never bitter, but with all the spirit of a great beer. So when you want a beer, it's just plain better. Coors is the one. Sunday on Married with Children. Kelly needs advice on romance, so she goes to the experts. This is not about sex, is it? Because I don't know anything about that. I know. Mom told me. Next, it's Cheech and Tracy. She's too so beautiful. She must be a, a movie star or a prostitute. In the comedy matchup of the year on the Tracy Ullman Show. Could you pass the gravy boat? Then, find out why America is having a love affair with duet. Sunday at 7.30 on Channel 14. Back at Jack Murphy Stadium, Jim Lawwell here, along with Gary Ness. The Lobos will receive as we get the football game underway, and Terrence Mathis and Shane Hall will be deep for the University of New Mexico. Tyler Ackerson will tee it up for San Diego State. Aztecs trying to finish up on a winning note. And we're underway. Mathis will bobble it. And now up the field, across the 15, the 20, a little bit of room for Terrence. Gallops across the 30, and they dump him at the 32-yard line. So Mathis, after bobbling the football, shows some of that All-American type talent that he possesses. Gerald Williams came in to make the stop along with Michael Broom. There's the New Mexico offense. And, of course, Mathis back full speed. Barry Garrison. There's that offensive line. 
Garrison will throw on first down. Incomplete, they wanted Mathis over the middle. So the Lobos go right to the air to start things off, and we expected that. And Terrence Mathis looks like he's not slowed at all by his ankle injury. Running back to kick off, he almost broke it, and then that was the favorite pass pattern that they used so effectively in the first few games of the season where Mathis crosses the field beneath the linebacker coverage. You got to look at the Aztecs defensively there. High backs behind Garrison on second and ten. Little running play. Shane Hall will be stacked up after about a yard game. He was hit in the backfield but was able to eschew that tackle, but then the Aztecs were able to close in and close in very quickly. There's been a weakness for San Diego State this year and has been their lack of defense. They've had some troubles on the offensive, or excuse me, the defensive line. Number 43, Brett Ferrignes in the screen right there, was moved there from a linebacker spot and has performed well for them this year. We'll call it third and nine for New Mexico at their 33-yard line. Garrison straight back with time, looking deep for Duff, incomplete, broken up, nearly picked off. Excellent play by Mario Mitchell back in the secondary for the Aztecs. You can't play it any better than that. No, and he's going to try to cross out, and Mathis is ahead of him trying to draw the defense with him, but you see Mitchell was actually running downfield with Mathis, but he, as the ball went in the air, he read it and recovered on duck. Albrecht's kick will bound around the 30, and Mario Mitchell will let it roll. Or check that. That'll be Gilbreth who lets it roll. And so with the football nestled at the 26-yard line in San Diego State territory, the Aztecs take over after Albrecht's punt of 39 yards. And we've been informed that Darren Douglas, because of some academic difficulties, did not make the trip this week. So there will be, here's Todd Santos leading number eight. Oh, what a field of receivers they have. And Jackson, Gilbreth, and Reed Martin, and a good offensive line. Tremendous speed in those receivers. Wide receivers to each side of the field. Santos, the NCAA career passing leader, fires downfield. They want Gilbreth deep. He's got it. He could be gone. To the 25, the 20. Turns on the afterburners. Touchdown, San Diego State. One pass, one score, and the Aztecs jump on top. 74-yard touchdown pass, Gary. What a start for Santos. It appeared as though Clewis, Troy Clewis, number four, was with him. But uh, the ball sailed. As, as we've seen so often in films this week, Santos throws a ball that seems to sail. It's not a hard pass. He just seems to loft it over, and it always seems to get to its destination. Well, coming on to attempt the extra point will be Tyler Ackerson. San Diego State striking for Paydirt on their first play from scrimmage. Ackerson bangs it through. The teams will head up the field. Well, 13.46 remaining first quarter. 74-yard touchdown pass for Santos to Gilbert. We'll be right back. Christ right. That's what sets Safeway apart from any other food store. Celebrate Thanksgiving with all the trimmings. Medallion Young Hen or Tom Turkeys are only 35 cents a pound while supplies last. Quantity restrictions may apply. Don't forget the Golden Fresh Yams. Four pounds for just one dollar. And Banquet Pumpkin Pies. A 20-ounce pie is just 79 cents through November 24th. Find values like these every day at Safeway. Open Thanksgiving 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Safeway. Quality. Priced right. Gus. Jack. What's up, Cinderella? Surprise. That's me. That's you. That's Gus. That's Gus. When you buy a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates, you'll get something extra. Either a free Gus or Jack, the two adorable mice from Walt Disney's classic movie, Cinderella. Now playing in theaters everywhere. They make great gift decorations, fun ornaments, and cuddly play pals. You can get either Gus or Jack with a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates. And happy holidays from Jack, from Gus, and Gus. Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness back at Jack Murphy Stadium. Todd Santos with his 24th touchdown pass of the season. A 74-yard bomb to Monty Gilbreth. And quickly, with one play, the Lobos trail it 7 to nothing. You know, Jim, strangely enough, as prolific a passer as Santos is, we, we have heard from coaches that he won't be a great pro because he's slow afoot and he doesn't throw a hard ball and so forth. But there again, how can you 
question that ability that he has. And that pass didn't wasn't impressive except it except it got over the defense and a score. Ackerson with the kickoff and Mathis takes it. He'll bring it up the field, heads to the sideline. He's dumped over the 20-yard line. Fine open field play that time for San Diego State. Coming in with a nice tackle. That time for the Aztecs was Patrick Rowe. Did a good job. And there, of course, is your scoring drive of 11 seconds. Only a 16-yard return for Mathis that time. He opened the game, galloping 39 with the first kickoff. So the Lobos operating just outside their own 20. Hash mark to the top of your screen. There's the numbers on Garrison this season. He's done very well for the winless Lobos. Garrison looking deep now, scrambles with room. Garrison across the 25 with a head down to the 28-yard line. A fumble, and San Diego State has the turnover and the football. Kenny Bernard recovered the fumble. Barry Garrison saw that his receivers were covered. He has people in the flats. There's Brett Ferrignes rushing against Sam Taylor. Now, he tucks the ball in and starts upfield. He's going to dive to get what four yardage he can, but there the ball has popped out. Behind him, and San Diego State gets some help early. I backs behind Santos. 7-0 San Diego State. Hewitt will run with it, but doesn't get anything. Dumped for a loss by a tenacious Lobo defense. Hewitt has scored 20 touchdowns this season, tying a whack record. There's Kenny Bernard, who recovered the fumble. John Bell, freshman, the true freshman from Del Norte High School in Albuquerque, made that play behind the line of scrimmage. Defensively, the Lobos are going to try to pressure Santos. They they feel like they have more they will have more luck trying to sack him than trying to cover his fleet receivers. Troy Reed is that wanting run, running back who looks like he might be a blocker. Santos to throw, scrambles forward, has all day, now scrambles with an open field to the 15 and slides into the 12 yard line. First and 10 there for San Diego State, but hold the phones. A penalty marker dropped back at the 31 yard line. 19 yard gallop that time for the quarterback, Todd Santos, and there he is. Conferring with his coach, Denny Stoles, one time coach of the year in the Big Ten Conference, and certainly coach of the year last year when he led the Aztecs in his first year. Offense, second down. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, he won the Mid-American Conference his last year there. Yes. And that was at Bowling Green, and then came here and won the WAC. So he's won, the WAC. won his conference two of the last three years, which is just outstanding. And that erased a big gain on foot by Sanis, something he doesn't usually do. Second down and 18 for San Diego State. Santos straight back, dumps it off to Gilbert across the 25 and to about the 20 before he's ridden out of bounds. Gilbreth showing his great speed, but not only Gilbreth, but the entire receiving core, including the two deep receivers for San Diego State, can flat fly. Oh, they can they can really gain yardage. They can get downfield and run right by you, and Santos has a strong arm to lay it up there. But they, the only real big receiver they have is, is Kerry Reed Martin, the tight end, who is out of the mold of Bob Awalt, their first round draft choice last year on the conference championship team. Third and about four, and they'll run it with Hewitt. He cuts outside and drifts towards the first down marker that is driven back. They might be a little bit short, and it'll be interesting to see if San Diego State chooses to try to go on fourth down or send out Ackerson and kick the field goal. There are the numbers on Paul Hewitt, and boy, what kind of a season he is having. Danny Laura came up to make the tackle, and Laura over the last three weeks has been extremely active. But as you have pointed out so many times, when your safety and defensive backs are making tackles, you're getting whipped up front. Well, it means they're probably already, ha the offense has probably already have made a first down. So the defenders, the defensive backs and so forth are to, to save the touchdown. And that, that doesn't mean they keep possession of the ball. They didn't regain the possession. And it's a first down. So they did get it. So there will be no decision, and they'll move the markers up first and 10 for San Diego State at the 17-yard line in New Mexico Territory. There's Mike Shepard, the Lobo head coach, 
Lobo's down seven to nothing, and there's Denny Stoles, the head coach at San Diego State. His football team has won three of their last four. They played four of their first five on the road, and because of that, they got off to a terrible start, had some internal problems. They got that taken care of by getting rid of a couple of players and have started to play better football. Santos gives on the run to Hewitt, and Hewitt is dropped for a loss. Good hustle, good forge forward that time by the Lobos defensively. Musa Kanicki in there on the stop. Also Brian McCabe, and McCabe, who moved from center to nose guard, has certainly developed as a defensive player in his first year at that post. You notice number 32 Hewitt there in your picture is not very big. And he doesn't try to run over people. He just simply tries to scoot around them. And he has that great quickness and agility. He can change his direction so quickly. He's tough to tackle. Troy Reed and Hewitt are the running backs. Santos to throw. Downfield incomplete. Just kind of dumped that one off. Whatever San Diego State was trying to do it, it just simply did not materialize that time for the Aztecs. Seven rushers by the Lobos. And they contain Santos really well. In other words, he... He couldn't run outside the containment and thus buy time for his four down receivers downfield who are trying to escape man-for-man -man coverage. So good defense by the Lobos on that play. Santos has passed for 89 yards already. All right, Santos back to throw. Over the middle, complete to Gilbreth. He can be dangerous, and it'll be goal to go at the three. That time, Gilbert found the seam, as they say. Read it, received the ball, and with Santos, the thing we noticed on film is how accurately he passes the football. He is so accurate. If you give him time, which he has plenty of here. You see Torrey Edwards, the defensive end, is in the bottom of the screen. There's no one containing him. Sanis is, I mean, um, <clears throat> the isolation on Clay Orris and the linebackers, we see Sanis over the ball again. All right, on the goal to go, here's Hewitt on the sweep, and he goes over a couple of tacklers, pulling to the one-yard line. It'll be second and goal right there, a host of Lobos in on the stop. Clay Orison led the way for New Mexico. Watch Hewitt run right out of a couple of tackles here. Let's see who has a hold of him there. Right out of uh, Jeff McDonald's hold. Steve Webster comes in to finally bring him down short of the goal line. Lobos will stack it up, second and goal. Out of the eye, they pitch it to Hewitt. He gallops outside, touchdown, San Diego State. They lead it 13 to nothing. San Diego pulled a guard. That play was designed to go wide. He didn't bounce out. That's a sweep all the way. There's the guard. You see 63 to the left of the screen. Now watch him chop down Webster, the middle linebacker. Danny Lara in chase, but it's too late. As Carol King once wrote and musically performed, it's too late. Here's Ackerson for the PAT. Still nearly 10 minutes to go in the first quarter as Ackerson pounds the extra point through, but a penalty marker thrown. The kick was good. Aztecs illegal procedure. Which will really have no effect. They'll still, doesn't pose any problem. In fact, some, many kickers would rather kick from uh, <laughs> five yards further back anyway. Hey guys, could you jump off sides, please? Ball, I really feel more comfortable. Offense. Well, this time it's kind of like a field goal attempt. Ackerson is true with it again. So they'll head up the field. We have 9 minutes 53 seconds remaining in the first quarter and your score now. The San Diego State Aztecs 14. The Lobos nothing. Hewitt scores as we pause.
New Mexico's number one volume import dealership, American Toyota, has the lowest price in New Mexico on two-wheel drive standard bed trucks, only $65.55. Or get a free $651 value back on a select group of two- and four-wheel drive trucks. You've made us number one in volume sales, and we're saying thank you with the lowest truck price in New Mexico, only $65.55. Our way of saying we do our best to make you happy. American Toyota. Yeah! TV was a fad a few believed in. One was a skinny kid from Omaha. We hope this program won't let you down, and uh, frankly, uh, we know it will. One debuted co-starring with an icebox. I want to tell you that the great witch camera's working. One took a green sock and created the world's most famous frog. That's wonderful. Do some more. Their contributions enriched our lives. November 30th, celebrity hosts honor seven legends of television on the Academy Hall of Fame. Share the memories on Fox. Back at Jack Murphy Stadium, 14 to nothing, San Diego State. And it's really kind of cool, although it's clear it's cool in San Diego. In fact, it would remind you a bit of maybe a winter's evening in the Duke City. Well, you know, last week uh, they played Colorado State here, and you could see on the network telecast of that particular game, you could see the breath of the players. So it gets down, the humidity, of course, is high, so the temperature gets down there. It's very chilly here at night. Not too bad at the, at the present, but second half, we can look for that. Well, the one difference is when you touch the light switch here, you don't get that zap you'll get <laughs> when you're back home in the Duke City. <laughs> That's for sure. That humidity will prevent that. Beautiful stadium here, Jack Murphy, San Diego Stadium. Hackers and booms it. Mathis <laughs> will bring it up. Across the 10-yard line to the 15 and across the 20 to the 22. Aztecs closing in quickly that time. Randy Peterson led the way. Now already it's, going, it's imperative for the offense of the Lobos now as we see that previous drive set up by the fumble. Three minutes, 37 seconds, 34 yards and eight plays. Hewitt on the sweep for the touchdown, 14 to nothing, San Diego State. Garrison with a running play to Scott Howard and the St. Pius product will net five yards. Brett Ferriniers came in to make the tackle that time, at least lead the way, and there's Scott Howard who is developing into a pretty solid running back for New Mexico. He seems to get better as the season goes longer. He's the only running back for New Mexico to gain over 100 yards in a game this year. But it's really important for the offense here to hold the ball, make a few first downs before the defense gets weary. Again, a bootleg keeper. Garrison thought about throwing. Now in duress, fires downfield. Great leaping catch by John Duff. First and 10, New Mexico at their 48-yard line. Boy, Garrison was being pressured, a gain of 20 yards on the pass, and Duff, really an excellent leaping attempt to gather to an end, kept his concentration together. And, and Garrison, this is the bootleg pass that has been so successful for Garrison this year. Now, John Duff had trouble releasing off the line of scrimmage, and he's a little bit late getting there. Barry did a good job to buy time to get it, the ball to him. Mathis is a running back. Will try the sweep and gets near a first and ten in San Diego State territory, but fumbles, and the Aztecs claim they have it, and they do. So that'll be the second time now that the Lobos have fumbled the football away, and we're only in the first quarter of play. Lyndon Early was definitely early, early enough to get there and pick up the fumble and the turnover, and the Aztecs up by two touchdowns head the other way. Mathis started in the backfield. That's first time tonight. There you see the ball bounding free. It definitely was a fumble. And early with a recovery. But they, at least they crossed the 50-yard line, got the ball downfield a little bit this time. Makes it a little further to go for the Aztecs. You and Norman Vincent Peel. <laughs> Here's Santos looking deep. Complete at the 29-yard line. Kerry Reed Martin, the tight end, who runs much better than a tight end usually does. A penalty marker down. A big gainer of 30 yards plus, I believe, will have a face mask on New Mexico. Kerry Reed Martin last week showed his skills, and he was Santa's primary receiver in their victory over Colorado State. Penalty refused. Defensive interference is declined. It was not a face mask interference, but he caught the ball anyway, so. 
Now watch, actually, the coverage isn't bad right here, but the ball was laid in there perfectly and a nice diving catch by Reed Martin. Santos over the 100-yard mark in passing. And the bad news about Reed Martin is that he's only a junior and Lobos will have to see him again a year from now. First and 10, San Diego State at the Lobo 29, and Hewitt starts in, goes outside, and is tackled for a loss. John Bell, the Del Norte product, came in and made a fine tackle, now a penalty marker thrown, and we'll sort this one out. Good play by Bell, and there he is right there. That's John Bell's second tackle behind the line of scrimmage in this game. Like the penalty will be a clip. Hewitt has not netted any yardage. He has a touchdown already. But he is minus yardage rushing now. In fact, he's at minus one and a total of six carries. And three of those six carries have been minus yardage. So the Lobos are penetrating a little bit when the Aztecs want to run the football. But the Aztecs do lead at 14 to nothing. Now, if at this stage, given San Diego's offense, Todd Santos, the quarterback, you'd line up in a prevent defense. Let's see how many rushers there will be. Second down, they call it 28 yards to go. We got 25 on our graphic. It's really academic. It's a long way. Santos downfield complete. Gets out for Jackson, and Jackson, a pretty good gainer, but they've got a ways to go still. About 10 on the play. Tory Edwards kind of hung on to Jackson, and that's a good thing because Alfred Jackson is a speed burner. He, if you miss a tackle on Alfred Jackson, there's a good chance he'll get in the end zone. 7.33 to go in the first quarter. If you just tuned in, it's 14 to nothing San Diego State. They're operating in Lobo territory, third down and 18 to go. Santos to throw with time scrambling now and goes out of bounds with it now they're in that kind of gray area now where maybe you try the long field goal or perhaps you punt it Ackerson their field goal kicker however does have good range he has a strong leg and they have a 14 to nothing lead I think they'll go for the field goal here coach Stoles is opting for that I don't think they're really worried about giving up field position to the to the Lobos Now, on the previous extra point, Steve Webster was able to get through the guard tackle gap on the right side. Watch Steve. Watch for number 34 on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Now, there's a procedural. Ackerson is 10 of 14 kicking field goals this season, so he's had a good campaign. We'll see which way the penalty goes. The Lobos were celebrating, and that's why. So now Ackerson will have an attempt. He got a move. Dead ball. Five yards. Encroachment. Offense. Fourth down. And after the penalty, that brings on the punting yeah. team. They, as you said, they were marginal, but within his distance, and that five yards told them they're going. They better punt it instead of uh, try for the three. Wayne Ross is the punter for San Diego State. First time we've seen him. He's averaging 43 yards a punt. Randy Johnson back to return the kick for New Mexico. Ross hangs it up nicely. Aztecs after it. Fair catch at the nine-yard line by Randy Johnson. He really had no choice. And so the Lobos start deep in their own territory at their own nine-yard line, trailing at 14 to nothing. And we have 7.05 remaining in the first quarter of play. And we saw Todd Santos strolling, or prowling, I should say, back towards the Aztec bench area. Aztec started slowly, Gary, had some internal problems. Denny Stoles took care of it, and then they started winning football games. Well, everyone expected them the odd, to be the odds-on favorite because uh, they were repeat champs, and they had Todd Sanis, their great quarterback, returning. But as you said, they started on the road, got off to a poor start. Garrison dumps it off, nearly picked off, and it is. Maury Paul hit Scott Howard. The ball came loose, and Paul, an excellent athlete, gathered in the loose ball. He did it all in one play. A good hit and a turnover, and now the Aztecs have it again. Goal to go inside the Lobo 10. Let's see. I believe this pass is slightly behind Scott Howard, and he has to reach back for it, tips it in the air, and unfortunately, Maury Paul 
had the right angle on approach on it and picked it off. Nice interception by Paul. Paul is 6'3", 185-pound freshman, and that's why he's playing as a freshman, because of that type of ability. And he will put on weight as the years progress. So Santos inside the 10, goal to go, and they're going to try Hewitt. He's trapped in the backfield again. So really the rushing attack for San Diego State, very suspect. Clay Orison came banging in to make the tackle. Well, the Lobos are playing with a true seven-man front. Clay Orison rushed from the outside. And if they continue to do that, they're going to have to move a second back into the backfield to lead on running plays or just try to release the ball quickly because the defensive strategy of Coach Stanton is to try to rush and contain the quarterback, trying to force him to throw the ball early. Lobos with three turnovers already, and we're in the first quarter. Santos dumps it off complete. And out of bounds at the three-yard line will be Robert Claiborne. Now, Claiborne, of all the receivers, and San Diego State has many of them, can fly. In fact, he caught in the Stanford game. He was in the end zone, an interception at the 10 going the other way. He caught the Stanford defensive back trying to return it all the way and was blocked out of bounds as he chased him. Was blocked out of bounds and caught the Stanford defensive back at their own 30-yard line. It was an incredible play, a truly incredible play. Now look, there are no remaining backs. This is a spread. They've spread the complete width of the field. Santos to throw it, thinking touchdown in trouble. Scrambles away, however. Fires incomplete, penalty marker down. Might have had a clip by one of the Aztec linemen in the backfield. Uh, no might about that. We, we could see that from up here. The Lobos, I think, did a smart thing. And against that spread, they came with the rushers, and Sanis wanted to buy a little time and so the couple receivers could cross, and he would free someone in the end zone. Chris Houston now there is going to issue the decision. Well, the Aztecs have been penalized very much here thus far in the first quarter, five times for 20 yards already. Pippen on the offense, declined, fourth down. Fourth down. Now we'll see, perhaps, the field goal attempt. Yes, they refuse a penalty, and Tyler Ackerson, as we told you, 10 out of 14 kicking this season. That's very accurate. There are the numbers. Look at his extra points. Boy, that's what you want. Has not missed an extra point this season. People take that extra point for granted. This field goal attempt will be just shy of 22 yards. He bangs it, and it's true. So Ackerson kicks the field goal, and 6.05 remains in the first quarter. We're going to take a break with your score. The San Diego State University Aztecs 17, the New Mexico Lobos nothing. The spirit of Ajax keeps shining through with unbeatable prices. Take this brand new single wide starting at just $126 per month. Only Ajax can offer such great prices like luxurious double wides from just $253 per month. Our spirit will not be beat. To prove it, huge triple wides start at $398 per month. At Ajax Factory Outlet, we guarantee the lowest possible prices and the largest inventory. Take I-40 West to the top of Nine Mile Hill and exit 149. At Ajax, we've got the spirit and it shows. <laughs> Keep on talking, talking, keep on talking, talking, get a portable phone today. Following the 22-yard field goal by Tyler Ackerson, he'll kick it off. Santos has completed four passes in a row now, is 6 of 10 for 154 yards. Here comes Terrence Mathis across the 20 into the 21-yard line. Lobo football here on KGSW TV 14 is brought to you in part by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. And speaking of slowing down, the Lobos need to slow down Santos a little and kind of pick up their offensive attack. The numbers on Garrison, a tough start thus far. Well, you know, 
Garrison one for four, 21 yards. But uh, actually, they've been moving the ball a little bit. It's it's the fumbles and that one interception that has uh, hurt them so much. Rather than San Diego State stopping them, they've stopped themselves. Garrison to throw in the middle, complete to Mike Henderson, the freshman out of Huntington Beach, California, as a first and ten, and a penalty marker is thrown. Official way to the other side of the field came galloping across the field to throw the hanky that time. And Henderson is complaining about something. This is a pattern that the Lobos have used effectively all year. What they do is bring one of the wide receivers, it's usually Mathis, but in this case Henderson, underneath the linebacker's coverage, drop it over the lineman. Pair. First down. And that's what Mike Henderson was complaining about. They grabbed by the face mask, so that will be tacked on to the game. Bring the ball up to the 39-yard line. And so the Lobos have it there, first and ten. Barry. San Diego State up 17 to nothing. Excuse me, Gary. Barry Garrison is still the fifth the fifth in the nation in total offense. In his first year as a starter, as a senior, Coach Denny Stoltz. That's Duff in motion and now headed back to the bottom of your screen. Howard tries the running play and the Aztecs stack him up. Nothing there. Mario Mitchell came blitzing in and then Chuck Nixon no relation to Richard, came in to help as well. But Chuck Nixon had an older brother who played here at San Diego State who three years ago was the number one draft choice of the Washington Redskins. And is, he has since been traded, but he is still, he's playing in some, one of the secondaries in the NFL. Lobos go to the shotgun on second and ten. Garrison in trouble, scrambles forward. Now fires downfield, incomplete. Over the head of Terrence Mathis. Mathis had broken free, but Garrison was being pressured so much he stepped up, had to hurry the throw, and really didn't have time to plan himself. Exactly. When he stepped up, that helped him elevate the ball too far. And You know, you've got to... Uh, it's harder to judge when you're on the run, harder to throw when you're on the run. That one sailed a little high. There's Mike Shepard, the Lobo head coach. Trying to get his offense down the field, strike a little pater. Garrison now firing downfield, complete to Terrence Mathis, or check that. Let's make it Al Owens. It'll be a first and ten inside San Diego State territory. They'll mark it at the 47-yard line. A oh. gain of about 15 on that one. Oh, and this is so close to an interception. Mario Mitchell, watch him. See right just over his fingertips. That ball had to thread the needle, and nice job of concentrating by Al Owens, the junior from Highland High School in Albuquerque. Here's the Taffy Duck, Donald Duck, Polecat, Pole cat, <laughs> you name it. It's weird. It's freaky, and it doesn't work this time. Paul will lose a couple of yards. I have to uh, give Jim Height, the, uh, the coach at Goddard High School, credit for giving me a call after seeing one of our broadcasts earlier in the year. And he says, hey, Gary, that's, that's not the Daffy Duck offense. That's the Polecat offense. That's an old high school offense. Well, the University of Utah has worked that very effectively this season. Well, they gave BYU a battle, but lost this afternoon, a last-second field goal. Second and 12, New Mexico, draw to Howard. Scott slides outside, but is lassoed and thrown to the turf. Good hustle that time. Closing in Clark Moses. Also Harold Hicks. Hicks and Moses. It's going to be very difficult to run wide with San Diego's team speed. He's going to have to cut upfield. You won't be able to turn the corner against such speed. It's going to be third and about 15. There's Hicks. Garrison. His lone running back is Scott Howard. With time, Barry way downfield with it, complete to John Duff. The 25, the 20, could be a touchdown down at the 6th. In San Diego State Territory, it'll be first and goal to go. What a fine open field job of running by Duff, and Garrison had it right on the money. 45-yard pass. And watch the block by none other than Terrence Mathis out in front of Duff. Now this ball, boy, I I've got to give Barry Garrison credit. He's laying that ball in there very well. Now watch Mathis out in front. He's going to keep the defender occupied. Duff almost hurdles him. Down to the seven. Goal to go for the Lobos. 
Scott Howard tries the right side of the line, gets to about the five-yard line. Maybe just inside, it'll be second and goal to go there for New Mexico. Just over three minutes to go in the first quarter. San Diego State with a couple of quick touchdowns and a field goal, leading 17 to nothing. But the Lobos are knocking on the door right now. Mike Shepard would certainly like to get this in the end zone and get the Lobos back in this game. Still early. Garrison to throw on second and goal. The Mathis hit and uh, dropped right outside the goal line. It was quite a hit that time for the Aztecs who closed in quickly. And quite a catch by number 15. If you consider the fact that a week ago Tuesday he had a uh, surgery on a broken nose which he suffered in the, in the Wyoming game, he takes quite a hit here. Right over the umpire. So it's third goal to go inside the one yard line. Terrence Mathis now moving into a tie for sixth all time in receiving in the whack with that catch. Here's Howard, touchdown to Mexico, and a penalty marker thrown, so hold the phone. Well, let's hope that doesn't go against New Mexico. Nice hold there by Terrence Donaldson. Lobos are backing up, however. Nope. Terrence Donaldson and you. It is against Edwards. San Diego State. Second TD of the year for Scott Howard. So fortunately, the penalty goes the other way. Nice drive by the Lobos. Impressive. Haven't given up at all. And so Rick Walsh to attempt the extra point. Well, those are on the board now. Extra point is true. So 2.06 to go in the first quarter of play, and the Lobos on the board with San Diego State leading it now, 17-7. to What the Lobos needed was a long drive, and that's what they'll get, and here's how they score the touchdown. And watch Shane Hall, number eight. You see him hit the linebacker right there? And then Donaldson and Etheridge with their blocks. The, those three men opened that hole for Scott Howard, and he went through untouched on the goal line. You don't see that very often. So the Lobos coming in strong. On the board, Wednesday night on KGSW TV 14, it'll be the world broadcast premiere of Hoover versus the Kennedys, the second Civil War. It's the dramatic story of J. Edgar Hoover and his battles with President John F. Kennedy and then Attorney General Brother Bobby Kennedy. Don't miss it. Wednesday night at 8 right here on KGSW TV 14. Is that anything like the Calhouns and the Lampets or whatever that was? No, I think this was a, a battle at higher levels. Yeah, I think that should be an interesting uh, story. Patrick Rowe back to return the kick. Albrecht tees it up for New Mexico. Rowe after it, can't get to it, lets it roll into the end zone, and the Aztecs start at their own 20. Only 2.06 remaining in the first quarter. San Diego State leading it 17-7, but the Lobos just culminated an impressive drive with the touchdown run by Scott Howard. And sometimes when the offense does a good drive like that, it perks up or inspires the defense. So we see the San Diego bench and coach Denny Stoles on the sideline. Santos will have eye backs behind him. Hewitt on the running play and only gets about a yard, maybe two. It'll be second and long for San Diego State. Now on the last two possessions, the Lobos lining up with their bare defense with a seven-man front, actually an eight-man front because you've got a safety up there in position to rush, has uh, handled the, the Aztecs very well. And right there, you saw the Aztecs trying to run on first down against it, gaining only a, a long yard or a short two. There's the drive, an impressive 79-yard drive by New Mexico. Santos, play action fake down deep, has a man complete and out of bounds, Patrick Rowe. It'll be first and 10, San Diego State at the 35-yard line. Now the Lobos have gotten on the board. They trail at 17-7, but they must stop San Diego State. And there we saw an adjustment by the San Diego State offense. They brought an, an extra back to Sanis, the quarterback's right, in order to an extra blocker there so that they could work on the wide receivers and buy a little time. 
row flanked to the bottom of your screen. San Diego State using a number of people tonight. Santos to throw again. A little out pattern, complete and caught. So the Aztecs completed. They'll be very close to the first and ten. Michael Broom out there to make the catch. The Aztecs are using Troy Reed. Isn't that a nice leaping catch there? Troy Reed, another fullback in the backfield to provide the additional protection for Santos. Santos approaching the 200-yard mark already has passed for 177 yards. Second down, less than a yard. Santos will throw, looking over the middle, sack. So the Aztecs got a little greedy on second and one, and the Lobos come in with a big sack and make them pay dearly for it. Clay Orison sacked Santos. And you know, the, it's called a waist down. It, what means is on second and one, if you come up and throw a long pass and an incompletion, see Musa Kaniki and Clay Orison closing in, if you come up with an interception, you still end up with third and one, and you're probable to get your first down. But the rush got to Santos that time. He wanted to throw the ball deep, but did not have the time. So third and a little more than 10 for the Aztecs. Santos to throw. With time, dumps it incomplete. Monty Gilbert was the intended receiver. That's the gun and the end of the first quarter. After one quarter of play here in San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, it's the Aztecs 17, the Lobos 7. To be healthy, wealthy, and wise, exercise is only part of the picture. Knowing what to eat and where to eat are just as important. At Ogilvy's, each item is prepared from scratch daily with only the highest quality ingredients. Consistent, distinctive, fresh, and healthy. In fact, many of our recipes are created in cooperation with the American Heart Association. That's food for thought from Ogilvy's. To eat healthy, wealthy, and wise. Get back your policy, dig up your bill. Leave it to the good hands, people. Do it right now or you know you never will. Come into Allstate and compare our low homeowner's rates. You might just save some money. Check through your files, look how you low. It's down to Allstate, you might save some dough. Leave it to the good hands, people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness back at Jack Murphy Stadium. I nearly called you Jimmy Williams. Uh-oh. <laughs> you don't look anything like him either. Oh, I wish you'd have said that because because <laughs> Jimmy's so much younger and taller and handsomer and all that. Yes, but he doesn't have the knowledge that <laughs> those years of moving down the winding road can oh, bring. Oh, those years, huh? Wayne Ross will punt. Lobos trail at 17-7 as we switch into the field, start the second quarter. Low spiraling kick. Mathis will bring it up the field. 30, 35, and dumped right there. And oh, did Clay Orison come close to blocking that punt. There's Terrence. Doesn't have that bandage over his broken nose this week. The young man has a lot of courage in addition to his talent. The Lobos, a good field position, just inside their own 36. Mathis to the bottom of your screen. Al Owens, the Highland High product of the top of your screen. Garrison straight back in trouble, and they sack him. Boy, slashing in very effectively that time was Milt Wilson. Now, Wilson wears 33, but he is a defensive tackle. Well, he's 6'2 and 240 is not a big defensive tackle these days, but he makes up for it in quickness. They had a four-man rush, which normally you would expect the offensive line to hold out, but sometimes they widen their stance and tee off a little bit if they expect you to throw, and the Lobos are going to throw. There's Wilson. Gary noted his size, only 240, but a sophomore. They'll put some more weight on him. Garrison to throw it, swings it out, and, oh, Shane Hall hit hard, incomplete. Fortunately, that pass sometimes can be ruled a lateral, and fortunately, that one wasn't. Well, Shane has to get wide and turn his inside shoulder so that Garrison can throw the ball forward, and it's slightly forward. It's a little difficult to tell at this angle. 
Looks like the Aztec defense has turned it up a notch on this I, series. I think they had scouted that play, don't you? Third down, and we'll call it 21 for New Mexico. Garrison to throw again. Setting up a little screen to Shane Hall with blockers up the field, hit hard at the 34. Really a nice stick by Mario Mitchell. Mitchell is a junior. We watched him on film, and he's kind of a headhunter and very aggressive and the kind of athlete. That Gary, you were alluding today. We were talking about what it takes to win in the Western Athletic Conference, and you said this is the kind of defensive back you've got to have. Well, now watch. Barry Luther's out in front, but now he'll come in behind Barry Luther. I don't believe that Sheen ever saw him. Otherwise, he would have gotten on Barry Luther's hip. Ball looks like it might be deflected, Jim. Yeah, they got a piece of it, but Gilbreth has to let it roll, and it'll be down inside the 25 of San Diego State. Albrecht with a 40-yard punt. Albrecht has really been Jekyll and Hyde as a punter. Some weeks he kicks the heck out of the ball. Other weeks he just doesn't kick well. Well, you know, punters are... Punters are a strange group to try to coach. You know, pun punting is a skill which uh, you either have or you don't. And pun punters are recruited rather than coached or taught. And sometimes, uh, well, I'm, I'm tempted to use the word flake, but it, but consistency is, is a problem for good for good punters. Consistency. Santos scrambling downfield, wide open, complete Claiborne. Claiborne is dangerous if he gets past you, but the Lobos close on him well, and it'll be a first and ten for San Diego State at the 37-yard line. Now, Santos getting very close to a 200-yard passing night. We still have 13 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. And the Lobos showed that eight-man rush, but then Danny Lara backed up into the safety spot just as the ball was snapped, so he was waiting back there in case Claiborne got the ball behind the coverage, but they closed on him very well. Santos, first and ten outside his own 37. A little draw play to Hewitt, and Hewitt will get out across the 40, just spinning and hustling. It didn't look like he'd get anything, and he nearly got five yards on the play with extra effort. Torrey Edwards finally lassoed him and brought him to the turf here at Jack Murphy. Hewitt has such balance and agility. He's just awfully hard to bring down. He's not going to run over you, but he has changed directions on you. See Steve Webster, who's normally a very good tackler. He escaped him and Torrey Edwards, number 47, just hanging on there till help comes. Santos on second down with time. And the flat Claiborne complete across the 45 to 40. Look at him fly across the 30. Down to the 22 of New Mexico. That is what makes Robert Claiborne such a dangerous athlete. And you know, you, you, you have to give credit to Todd Sanis for all that yardage, over 11,000 yards now. But here's why, one of the reasons he has so much yardage, receivers like Claiborne get a pass, oh, seven, eight yards over the line of scrimmage and turn it into a 30-yard gain. And that's the great speed of Claiborne. A 36-yard pass, which gives Santos now 224 yards unofficially. First and 10 Aztecs at the Lobo 22. Little running play with Hewitt, stacked up well by New Mexico. Brian McCabe getting up off the bottom of that pile. One first down, the Aztecs like to come out, line up in the eye formation and run Hewitt off tackle. Just try to keep that defense honest. Now notice the fullback Reed. Now they brought him in number 37. Now he'll line up right behind Santos and to his immediate right. He's there for a blocker. This time they run it again. Hewitt has a little room. Cuts outside across the 15. The 10 could be a touchdown. Jeff McDonald hits him. Fumble into the end zone. Penalty marker thrown. Well, you're the color analyst, so you can sort all of this one out. <laughs> the penalty has to be a face mask. All right. What about the football? The ball recovering forward and rolling out of the end zone. Let's see what, let's see if it, I think it went into the end zone and rolled out of the end zone, which might be, let's see, a touchback. Should be a touchback. 
But let's see about this penalty and see what uh, other complications. Boy, there. the Lobos are getting hot down there. They don't like the way this is turning. The face mask. All right, let's see what they rule about the fumble here. Mike Shepard scratching his head. Face mask, defense, half the distance from the end of the run. My goodness. The run did not end there. He neither went out of bounds or was tackled, I don't believe. Let's see. Let's see. Now the sideline will be on your left. Cuts behind his guards block. John Bell leaped at his feet there. Nice little cut there by Ewan. Yeah. Now there's Jeff McDonald. Now there's the ball rolling free. He slapped it out, stripped him from yeah, behind. Yeah. Also had his face mask. He was not tackled, nor did he go out of bounds. And Mike Shepard wants a further explanation, and I don't blame him. The, the, the question is spotting of the ball, not the penalty. So Shepard is going to talk it over, but... When all the arguing is finished, it's first and goal to go San Diego State outside the New Mexico one-yard line. And San Diego State leads the contest 17-7. to seven. I agree with you, Mike. Get the explanation. Why are you spotting the ball on the two-yard line? The penalty marked off from the point of the infraction, the face mask, was the ruling. The face mask, I guess, came before he punched the ball out. That would be about all I could explain. Uh, and it did look like that's what happened, but the ball did go rolling into the end zone and out of the end zone. And still, the runner is not down. You don't stop the play on a face mask. They'll run it with you, and he dives in very close to a touchdown. He's got it. 23-7, to San Diego State. Hewitt, 16 touchdowns now. Two tonight. Lobo defense is a little bit upset now. He'll come down shy of the goal line, but I think while he was in the air, let's see, if, it, if in the air, does he cross the goal line? No. No. I'll tell you what, I, <laughs> if I were down on the field, I think I'd be very upset over the last two plays. The extra point by Tyler Ackerson is accurate. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. 24-7. The Aztecs on top of it here. <laughs> Looking at you, beer drinkers, it's Coors Extra Gold. This ain't no all-star, ain't a hard beer, you'll agree. Cause no beer's as bold as Coors Extra Gold. No beer's as bold as Coors Extra Gold. Here's a smooth, easy drinking beer that's heartier in color and taste. Yeah, this is bolder, colder beer. Beer on a beat. One place you'll be sold. Grab hold of the gold. No beer's as bold as Coors Extra Gold. KGSW TV 14 follows the Lobo basketball team every step of the way in that NIT Big Apple preseason tournament. And of course, Monday night, it'll be UCLA. We know it's UCLA now and the Lobos, a university arena. Depending on ticket sales, we most likely will be live with that one. And don't forget, season ticket holders, here's the kickoff by Ackerson. Terrence Mathis will bring it up the field. A little reverse handoff to Al Owens, and he's in trouble. He cuts up field, a clip will be called, and he's out of bounds around the 20, so the Lobos should start around their own 10-yard line. But basketball season ticket holders from 8 to 11 tomorrow morning can purchase tickets for the UCLA Lobo game Monday evening. Season ticket holders, now remember this, you must bring a green postseason ticket marked A. Then at 11.30, the general public can grab those tickets. And we understand they were really going fast today, Gary. Everybody really excited about the fact that the Lobos get UCLA at home and University Arena, it's on to New York. Well, it's an exciting team that Gary Colson has, the Lobo basketball team, and that's an exciting opponent. Pippi. 
During the run back, first down. Well, they move it back to the six. And American Toyota is proud to be a sponsor of Lobo Football on KGSW TV 14. American Toyota is New Mexico's number one Toyota dealership. Lobo's been penalized twice now for 16 yards. Little sweep play with Scott Howard out to around the 10-yard line, about a gain of four. This is Lobo Football on KGSW TV 14, Albuquerque, New Mexico. You're a great entertainer. If you're going to run a sweep against San Diego State speed, you're going to have to pin the corner, and the Lobos haven't been able to do that. Their lateral, the pursuit, the speed of pursuit of San Diego State's just too good for them to turn the corner on a sweep. Second and a long six for the Lobos, or second and a short seven, whichever you prefer. Graphically, we say, we'll say seven. Garrison scrambles and is dumped out around the 12, maybe the 13-yard line. So, very in trouble, made something out of nothing as Craig Skaggs caught him around the ankle. And what he wanted to do, watch Barry. Now, he wants to throw quickly out here to Al Owens, then either back or back to Terrence Mathis. But the coverage is is the cornerbacks are playing up on the line of scrimmage and bouncing them that, that's, or beating on them as coaches say. They're not letting them release off the line of scrimmage so Barry had to pull the ball down and run with it. Aztecs leading 24 to 7. Garrison trying to set up a screen just dumps it off as it never materialized. That is something New Mexico has tried to do week in and week out is run the screens and the flat of the short dump off passes and they simply have not been effective. Well, in that particular play, the, the linemen usually are asked to block for a count or two, but you see the rush getting through there, that's too early. You're supposed to block them for a count or two before you release them, before the screen pass. Gilbreth returns the punt off the foot of Albrecht, straight up the middle and into Lobo territory at the 42-yard line. Now, why is it that some teams can run a screen or a little dump off? A lot of it has to do with decoy, and, and obviously for yes. New Mexico, they just have not been effective doing that. Now, as we see this replay of the run back, there again you see Gilbreth's great change of direction, his agility. But the two things you try to do is make the defense believe it's a pass play, so you block them on the line of scrimmage for a count or two, and the quarterback makes a second retreat. But if you allow them to stream in unblocked, the quarterback has to repeat too quickly. There's Santos, 9 for 12, 227 yards. He'll throw it again. Downfield complete. Jerry Reed Martin, the tight end, carrying a Lobo tackler to the 24-yard line. Chris Houston, number 36, has no easy task in covering Kerry Reed Martin. Kerry Reed Martin is in a tradition of great tight ends at San Diego State University. Bob A. Walt, their tight end last year, was a first-round draft choice. And here is Kerry Reed Martin, who is not quite as big as A. Walt, but I think he has a little more speed. And as, as the year has gone by, he has become a favored receiver of Todd Sanders. And, of course, Jerry Reed, the famous composer, guitarist, when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> when you're, yeah. And when you're not, you're not. Here's Hewitt on a draw with room. Uh, Trust the 15 to the 10 and bowls his way to the 7-yard line. So the Aztecs now on the move again, leading it by 17. 8.54 to go in the first half. And let's see. It, it looks like some Lobos have some opportunities to tackle him here. Kind of gets screened out there a little bit. Danny Lahr is slow getting up. 18 yards on the rush for Paul Hewitt. There are his numbers on the evening. Santos first and goal at the Lobo seven-yard line. The 6'2", 200-pound senior. Hands off to Hewitt. Hewitt goes wide. Touchdown, San Diego State. So Hewitt now starting to get it going a little bit and already the Aztecs in the 30s leading at 30 to 7 with Ackerson coming on to kick the extra point attempt. The one thing that the Lobos have had in pride in their defense has been their ability to play the rush at the goal line. The Torrey Edwards got pinned inside and Hewitt dipped outside, got into the end zone. Hewitt has scored three touchdowns already, 17 on the season. Pounds it through. 
8.27 to go in the first half. Your score now, the San Diego State University Aztecs 31, New Mexico 7. Stay with us now, won't you? Comet cleans Albuquerque. Clean two pair of pants, get the third for only nine cents any time year-round. Shirts in by nine, ready by four, finished your way, only 99 cents. Instant service with our pre-marked happy bag. Just drop it off. No waiting. Comet's growing with Albuquerque. One hour dry cleaning guaranteed until 4 p.m. at all seven locations. No extra charge. We accept all valid dry cleaners coupons. Comet, Comet cleans Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Quality dry cleaning at affordable prices. Quality. Priced right. That's what sets Safeway apart from any other food store. Celebrate Thanksgiving with all the trimmings. Medallion Young Hen or Tom Turkeys are only 35 cents a pound while supplies last. Quantity restrictions may apply. Don't forget the Golden Fresh Yams. Four pounds for just one dollar. And Banquet Pumpkin Pies. A 20-ounce pie is just 79 cents through November 24th. Find values like these every day at Safeway. Open Thanksgiving 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Safeway. Quality. Priced right. Be sure to join Gary Ness and me next Saturday at noon for the Lobos' final football game of the season when the Arkansas Razorbacks entertain the Wolfpack in War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Kickoff is live at noon right here on KGSW TV 14, your Lobo sports station. Duffy Doherty loosening up for New Mexico. We may see him at quarterback following the touchdown run by Hewitt. San Diego State leading 31 to 7, 8.27 to go in the first half. The kickoff comes to Terrence Mathis. Fakes the reverse this time and uh, bounds across to the 22-yard line. That'll be it. Lobo football telecast on KGSW TV 14 is brought to you in part by Safeway, America's favorite food store. And there's that scoring drive by the Aztecs. Four plays, 42 yards. Hewitt has scored three touchdowns per game for the last five consecutive games. Three, excuse me. Six consecutive games. Six of the last seven games. So at least he's been scoring touchdowns against a lot of opponents besides the Lobos. Garrison dumps it off to Reggie Rogers. And Reginald across the 25 to around the 26. It'll be second down. We'll call it a long six. Now, Rodgers is running that pattern in front of the linebackers short. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to see the Lobos throw the ball downfield. That's where they had their best success last week against the Air Force Academy. Get that ball downfield. There's Garrison's numbers on the evening. Complete to Mathis, making the catch on his knees and dumped first and 10 New Mexico at their 35-yard line. Or check that. Let's make that Al Owens who made the catch that time. My apologies to Al and Mr. and Mrs. Owens. That's All the Owens is out there. That's the way, Barry. That's getting the ball downfield. Get that first down. You know, sometimes you get into a pattern. You, you try the screens and the short passes, and, and if, you're, if you're not careful, the defense plays you for those, and those are really adaptations to to the regular offensive throwing downfield. So At this in motion, they dump it to him. And brother, is he hit. Clarence Nunn taking Nunn for prisoners, we should say. Uh -oh. My goodness, what a hit he put on Terrence Mathis. Well, now, someone is assigned to come out there and block him. I think Scott Howard's trying to get out there, but he can't make it. He's lined up too wide. You can, in college football, block while the ball is in the air if the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And that's it, but, but he lined up so wide, Scott Howard couldn't get to him. Clarence Nunn, Terrence Mathis. And Reggie Rogers running it. Terrence with another reception, moving up that ladder again. Finds himself now sixth, tied for sixth in a whack receiving wars. In fact, a very good receiver in uh, Theo Bell is who he is. Well, right now. I have a hunch, though, if Terrence uh, would give up that last one, he paid an awful price for that. He got hit right square. And it's third and long for New Mexico. High backs behind Barry Garrison. Play action fake downfield. Tossed up, nearly picked off. Blitzing in, Harold Hicks to the sideline. Nearly had it picked off. Hicks upset because he let it get away. There is Harold Hicks. 
fourth down. Lobos will punt. It's been pretty much all San Diego State. They lead it 31-7. The Lobos did have one fine-looking 79-yard drive. Albrecht off the side of the foot. Not a good kick. And out of bounds. They only get about, oh, I'd say about 15 yards on this punt. Maybe a little more than that if they're generous with the mark. Albrecht shaking his head as he heads off the football field. You know, punters kind of get in slumps. We were talked earlier about consistency being a problem with punters. And they get in slumps. And on the field runs number eight, Todd Sanis. And it'll be the last time anyone wears that number for an Az in an Aztec uniform. And he's closing in on that 17, 300-yard-plus game tonight. Santos holds every San Diego State game season and career passing record. He owns the book. With all the time, scrambles away, fires complete. Carry Reed Martin across midfield and spinning to the 44 in New Mexico territory. Well, coaches can tell me he doesn't have quick feet. And he can't do this and he can't do that. But he looks like a pretty good quarterback to me. Oh, yes. And what he did was he surveyed the field, read the defense, and threw to the remaining receiver that was open. In other words, he figured that play out. Of course, he was afforded the luxury of time. And he got the ball to reading. I agree. I think Sanis is a top pro prospect. I believe it's 21 NFL scouts. They tell us they're here to watch him tonight in his au revoir to college football. In Lobo territory, Santos steps up, fires, complete to Claiborne, who bobbles the ball incomplete. Nice hit by Danny Lara, breaking that one up. Danny Lara, who's had a rough go of it this year, his senior year. He's had to play virtually every position in the secondary. He's playing the free safety now. This is the second time this game he's gotten up slowly, but... But the Lobos simply have to go with Danny. There's really no one else. But what a hit he puts on right there. It'll be second and ten for San Diego State just inside the 44-yard line. Santos, 11 of 15, 265 yards, and a TD pass, a 74-yard bomb to Gilbert. This time a delay running play that does not materialize at all. John Bell, Musa Kanicki in there to close and stop. The Aztecs, it'll be third and a bunch for San Diego State. And there's a youngster here enjoying football. Who knows, perhaps one of these days down the road, he might be playing a little college football. Yes, indeed. Todd Sanis is going to, who that last graphic you saw a couple of plays ago, owns all the uh, San Diego State records. Now that says something when you stop to consider all of the San Diego State quarterbacks who have been through here, and we'll, we'll pick up on that in a minute. Well, let's do that right after this play. Santos, with a lot of time, fires it in the flat to Claiborne. It'll be shy of the first down, and it will be fourth down for San Diego State. Gary, you coach, there's a penalty marker down against San Diego State for years when Don Coriel was here. And uh, let's talk about those quarterbacks. I mean, there have been many, and they have been good. Oh, yeah. You remember a guy by the name of Brian Sipe? Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, played for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, really a tough, hard-nosed guy, too. Great yeah. leader. There's Denny Stoltz. Of course, he, uh, Don Coriel started the, you know, and if you look at the history of this program, Don Coriel's came here, and he made this from a small college program Holding to a major college program. On the offense, the fine, fourth down. And he also started the parade of passing quarterbacks. And they moved into this stadium, which was brand new at the time when Coriel began here. And really, I think this program is really a testament to Don Coriel, who then, of course, achieved a lot of fame in the NFL. St. Louis Cardinals, and then with the Chargers before getting the ax two seasons ago. But the one thing coaches all know, they try to dink the punt inside the 10. Aztec Safford can't get there. It'll come out to the 20, but all coaches know that you're hired to be fired. No matter how successful you are, Aztecs by 24 will be right back. a power in New Mexico, a power that's waiting to be put to work for you. It's a financial power so strong it can help you move toward your goals faster than you ever imagined. A power so positive that once you get going, the possibilities are endless. The power of positive banking. Get it. 
at United New Mexico Banks. If you could add for Toyota quality and get a truckload of free options, chrome bumpers, free, style steel wheels, free, sports striping, free, full carpeting, cloth bench seats, all free. $630 worth of free options on Toyota limited edition 4x4s. Priceless Toyota quality and free options. Now who's looking out for number one? Toyota. Who could add for anything more? Jim Lawwell, along with Gary Ness, back at Jack Murphy Stadium. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go in the first half. Your score, San Diego State 31, New Mexico 7. There's Mike Shepard, the head football coach at the University of New Mexico. Following the punt into the end zone, the Lobos take over at their own 20-yard line, and they'll be moving, and we hope moving, towards the goal, right to left on your television screen. will throw it incomplete and intercepted off of the hands of Scott Howard and then Kenny Bernard pulls it in Bernard Jr. the two inside linebackers Maury Paul and Kenny Bernard both now have an interception apiece in the contest and both of them have made big plays here's Bernard's interception now this ball is Bernard makes a nice grab just off the ground but he does hang on Scott Howard couldn't quite hold that ball. Now, that's the second interception when Barry Garrison's been trying to hit Scott Howard as a receiver, and it's bounced off of Howard's hand. That's the fourth turnover unofficially on New Mexico this evening. Santos looking deep, in trouble, and they sack him back at the 38-yard line. John Bell was having a very active ball game. Bell, the freshman, will admit to you when you talk to him that he's been roughed up and thrown around this year, but he says with each game he's learning more and more what people are doing to him and therefore improving. And you know, for being a true freshman, he has not squandered this year of eligibility. By that I mean he's getting 70 snaps a ball game as his coach... Uh, Michael White will tell you he's getting the same experience he would as a redshirt freshman. He was a terror in quad A football in the prep world of New Mexico. A draw play and running the football this time will be Tommy Booker. Booker doesn't get much. Be third down and uh, still around 20 for San Diego State. Brian McCabe with a stop that time. So when you get 70 snaps a ball game, such as Todd Bell, I mean, excuse me, not Todd Bell, John Bell has been getting. Coach Denny stole spaces the sidelines for San Diego. He, like Mike Henderson, the receiver of it as true freshmen, have not squandered their years of eligibility. They've gained some experience. Santos with all day. You can send in your ballot. There's the sack eventually, Brian McKay. Santos dropped back at midfield, and that'll bring on the punting team. So that's an excellent series for the Lobo defense. That's something they can be proud of, trailing 31-7. to seven. Two sacks in a row for Brian McCabe. Now, this is something that the Pro Scouts will not appreciate about Todd Sanis, holding the ball that long, giving the ground, and, and having to eat it. Or that is being sacked. Not literally, folks. Nice spiraling kick by Ross. Mathis a fair catch at his own 13. So with 2.26 to go in the first half, the Lobos starting deep in their own territory. That was a nice punt by Ross. 31-7, San Diego State. So following the turnover, the Aztecs started at the 22 of New Mexico, but finished at midfield. So a fine effort by the defensive unit and some fine calls that time by the defensive coordinator, Jack Stanton. Lobos have been tough on the Aztecs running. They've dropped them for a loss in 9 of 18 rushes thus far tonight. Garrison looking deep. Incomplete. There was a mix-up. Henderson was the intended receiver. It could have been Mathis as well, but Mathis turned in. Henderson was coming up the sideline, but seemed to be well behind the pass attempt by Garrison. Barry Garrison, 15, excuse me, fifth in the nation in total offense as his first year as a starter. And, you know, I don't think we've done it this year before, but we should give Steve Fairchild 
the young quarterback coach of the Lobos some credit for the development of Barry Garrison. That's a tough job, and he's done it well as in his first year as a starter. Here's Scott Howard on the run, and he'll carry tacklers out to around the 20-yard line. So Scott gets about seven. It'll be third and three for New Mexico. And off to number 26, Scott Howard. Scott Howard, number 26, showing some strength there. He is a very strong running back. Likes the inside plays. Ed Lambert, his coach, is to the left of the screen. Now that's Denny Stoltz, the San Diego State coach. The Lobos have elected with 1.58 remaining in the first half to call timeout. The ball resting at their 20-yard line. It'll be third and three as the Lobos talk it over. Ed Lambert out there. And Mike Shepard. And now we'll go to some of the fraternity and sorority people here. And of course, the weekends are the most fun when you talk about going to college. Weekends in San Diego. They look like they're enjoying it. A lot of fraternity and sorority banners hanging from the stadium here. Well, tomorrow night, don't miss Fox Weekend Television on KGSW TV 14. It's all going to start at 6 with 21 Jump Street, followed by Weirwolf or Werewolf, whichever you prefer. Up next at 7.30, it's Married with Children, followed by the Tracy Ullman Show, and then Duet. Now you have a real Sunday night alternative with Fox Weekend Television. It's right here on your Fox station, KGSW TV 14. Whether it be werewolf or werewolf, I don't really want to deal with one if I don't have to. No thanks. Garrison to throw it. They've got the first down. Across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Time running out in the first half. San Diego State led it after one quarter 17-7. They've added two TDs in the second quarter and lead 31-7. Garrison out of the shotgun. Dumps it off to John Duff. Duff tries to reverse his field and is dropped around the 33-yard line. Closing it hard was Maury Paul, and there is a penalty marker on the play back in the area where it could be roughing the passer. Indeed it is. That's one thing about Garrison this year. He's been extremely durable. Yes, he has. I, you know, it, it, with all the pressure that he has been under as a first-year starter and the mismatches... Roughing the passer, defense, first down. And the mismatches, mismatches in terms of personnel, uh, Barry Garrison <laughs> has done an admirable job. And here's the roughing call. Yeah. All the Aztecs have been penalized now. I believe a total of 66 yards, if I am adding correctly. Let's make that 51. Seven penalties. So they've been active. Garrison straight back now. Lobo's trying to get something on the board before halftime. Barry scrambling towards the sideline across midfield. Boy, he keeps it in bounds instead of going out of bounds. So the clock continues to run as we have 1-12 and counting remaining in the first half. And he saw the marker. He wanted to get beyond the marker, but in so doing, to get the first down, actually didn't quite make the first down, but in attempting to do it, he kept the clock running. Garrison to throw again without a huddle. Dumps it off to Scott Howard. He gets out of bounds. It will be a first and ten at the Aztec 41. 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Clark Moses driving. Scott Howard out of bounds that time. Looking towards the bench. Mike Shepard conferring. That's Ed Larson signaling in and Duffy Doherty. One of them is signaling in the correct call. The other is a decoy. To keep the... Uh, opposite sideline from interpreting their calls. I'd like to go back to the old days when quarterbacks called their own <laughs> plays. <laughs> Me too. I think that signaling stuff borders on here's the pass picked off. Oh, right into the hands. And Casey Copeland brings it up the field and is dropped around the 35 yard line. I would think if you studied films or if you want to send a guy to scout that you could probably learn how to read their different signs. I could be wrong. You could. Is this... Oh, no. It, he was hit as he was releasing the ball. Terrence Mathis was open downfield. You see Al Owens there trying to 
recover and make the tackle. See Terrence just coming into the picture. He was open, but Garrison was hit and couldn't get the ball to him. So now the Aztecs with 44 seconds. Let's see what they do, leading at 31 to 7. You can There's bet the they're going to air it out. Okay. They go down the field incomplete to Patrick Rowe. Take out one wide receiver that can fly, put in another. Boy, they're interchangeable here. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't know if you were asking a rhetorical question or not, but you can bet Todd Sanis is going to air this out with 44 seconds. Well, he's approaching the 300-yard mark, as you can see by the graphic. And they used a total of four seconds on that incompletion. So, Sanos at his 35-yard line. I backs behind him. This time they run it with, that'll be uh, Tommy Booker this time, and Booker picks up some yardage, but the clock continues to run. He's about a yard shy of the first down. There's a fresh uniform in this game, Booker. San Diego State are giving a lot of players the opportunity to play this week. Certainly they won't be accused of running it up as they're letting the clock run out here to end the first half. Little running play with Booker, heads outside with it. He'll get some real estate and that'll bring up the gun in the end of the first half of play. So after one half here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, your score, San Diego State 31, the New Mexico Lobo 7 will be back with the halftime festivities in a moment. in the second quarter of play. It's ironic you were talking through their schedule and um, you know they, they have a lot of things going for them in this program here with this nice stadium. Member of the WAC conference. He started at Whittier College then moved down here to San Diego State and of course because of his great knack for knowing the passing game he moved to St. Louis where being a workaholic, he worked night and day, but he got the Cardinals in the playoffs and then moved on to San Diego and, of course, came within a step of the Super Bowl on one occasion and then fell on hard times here. A couple of people got old, some draft picks didn't pan out, and uh, Don Coriel got his pink slip. And, you know, he's a fine guy. He's, he's well-respected in coaching circles. I remember when I was coaching at a, <coughs> at a different college and we would come here to play, there's a the halftime stats. Don Coriel, was, his hospitality and cordiality just overwhelmed you. You probably don't know where he went to college. <laughs> you want to guess? <laughs> okay, first downs, look at that. New Mexico 9 as opposed to 12 for San Diego, but San Diego scored quickly and often from the, from the uh, uh, turnovers, so that's why that looks a little uh, closer than you might expect given the score. Santos approaching that 300-yard passing game that he needs to tie Jim McMahon. And the total yards, uh, not doubled, but nearly doubled. Penalty-wise, San Diego State has been extremely aggressive, and they've paid for it penalty-wise. Time of possession, not that different, but the score is 31-7, and that's the bottom line. You can look at all the stats you want, but as you've mentioned so many times, what you read on the scoreboard is what it's all about. Well, and Coach Denny Stoltz here, uh, we'll be interested to see how what happens now after now I'm interested to see anyways what happens after uh, Todd Sanis gets 33 more yards and ties Jim McMahon's record of 17 300 plus games and uh, we'll see if what the score is at that time and how they choose to play from that point on 
Denny Stoles already has used some of his reserve players in that first half, which I think is a good sign. I, I think for a lot of reasons that's a good practice, but we'll see how that happens as we see number eight, Todd Sanis, there on the sideline. He's, he looks anxious to go again. He's smiling. Needs one warming, completion. Warming up those hands. One completion has set an NCAA division record for the for a career. And has passed for more yardage than any NCAA Division I quarterback. And here's a kickoff by Albrecht. Patrick Rowe bobbles into the end zone. He'll have to bring it out. Nope. He won't have to bring it out. He went got it. No, it, 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 the end zone. if he had fumbled it from outside in, but if the ball, if, if they ruled that the ball was carried in by the momentum of the kick, which that did, even though he tried to catch it, he does not have to run it out. So there he is, number eight. 13 of 17, 267 yards and a touchdown. You know, another thing and a lot of people don't realize is last year in Albuquerque, he broke his wrist against UNM and missed three ball games. They're going to run it with Hewitt, and uh, Hewitt gets a couple of yards, and the Lobos close in very quickly. It'll be second and eight for the Aztecs. We're just underway, third quarter of play. 31-7, San Diego State leading it. San Diego State playing their last game of this season. They will finish 5-6, and six, which will be a disappointment to Denny Stoles, his staff, and the Aztec fans and players. Well, they had high expectations being the uh, champions of the WAC Conference in 86, and their, their balloon burst early this year on the road. Santos will throw it with time, and he dumps it off. It's tipped up in the air, but grabbed, and picking up the first down and more will be Troy Reed. Reed, the 6'2", 220-pound senior, who basically is a blocking back. They keep him in the backfield to block and pick up the blitz. That time they called his number. He's a senior, and he'll have first down yard. Nice play. Now, Musa Kaniki, 79, gets blocked. No, excuse me, it's not Musa. A Lobo defensive lineman was blocked, knocked off his feet, got up and deflected that pass, and it still Reed ended up with it. I, you know, there's a little luck involved there. That was, and that was the uh, record-breaking completion, wasn't it? Tied the record, I believe. Tied. Here's uh, Hewitt with no place to go, and it'll be uh, second and ten for San Diego State. Hewitt has set a San Diego State University record for the most touchdowns rushing in a season. That's 17 that he has now. So Hewitt has more touchdowns than that overall. He has 23 overall, but 17 rushing. He's caught some touchdown passes as well. Hewitt is a junior. Santos to throw it. In trouble. Sacked by Musa Kanicki back at the 26-yard line. The third down and very long now. That's the fourth sack by the Lobo defensive front tonight. That's one place where they have excelled. Well, it's good to have Musa back after his strained knee early in the year. Lobos were down to three defensive linemen. And now they're only up to four with Musa's return. But uh, he and Brian McCabe and John Bell have all done a terrific job tonight. Four sacks totaling a loss of 38 yards for San Diego State. Third and we'll call it 20. Santos down the sideline has a man. They're going to call interference. You cannot screen the man out like that. And Troy Lewis was out there face guarding, I believe is the term they usually use. Michael Broom was the intended receiver. Troy was not, obviously not playing the ball. Now, he has a tough job. I don't want to diminish the fact that Troy has a tough job. They had a safety blitz coming. Jeff McDonald broke through. Todd Santa saw the blitz coming and lofted the ball over the defender. Now, what Troy needed to do was to have some idea where the ball was. Defense is passing the pair. Here, first down. First and 10 Aztecs at their own 41-yard line. So the Lobos had uh, moved them back, but the penalty gives the Aztecs the automatic first and 10. To interpret this, the official must believe that the defender is playing the ball, and no way is Troy playing the ball on that. Yeah. He's playing the man. You could interpret that from up <laughs> where we are. <laughs> Next Shepard had to put a coat on at halftime. It's getting a little cooler down there on the field. 
Santos back to fire it. Complete. That's Broom with blocking. First and 10 as he goes to the 43 in New Mexico territory. The strategy is still to try to pressure him. Now, Todd Santos was hit as he released the ball. But he's, he's able to read the defense so quickly, and his receivers respond with short routes. Now watch Broom cut this off. So he's only run down field five yards, and he turns around gets the ball. He knows that there's a blitz coming. And Steve Webster hustles back to make the tackle. Six more yards, and Santos will have his 300-yard game passing. Here's Hewitt with a big hole, and he'll get about eight yards before the Lobos bring him down around the 37-yard line in New Mexico territory. Torrey Edwards and a bunch of Lobos in on the stop. Hewitt now, who started out sluggishly, has rushed for 60 yards. 17 carries, 60 yards. Gives you an idea of how he struggled early, but he's beginning to loosen it up and, of course, has the three touchdowns. And there's the head man of San Diego State, Denny Stoles, who was quite a hero last year when he came in his first year and won the conference, and this year has come under some criticism, which happens when you lose. Santos with time, looking into the end zone. Incomplete, broken up. Michael Broom was wide open, but the pass hung up. And it was Danny Lara who tipped it away at the last moment. Well, that was a great effort by the defender. Santos doesn't usually... Now, let's watch this. See, that's Randy Johnson on the line of scrimmage. And it's Randy chasing him. That's right, Randy but, Johnson. But now watch. See, what he did that Troy Clewis didn't do in the previous down was he turned back and saw the ball, tried to find the ball. Now, had he run into Broom, it would have been more difficult to call interference because he was playing the ball rather than the man. Third and short, Lobos offsides. They toss it down the sideline, and that'll be another interference call. So the Lobos will be penalized twice on one play. First with the safety blitz being shown, I believe it was Danny Lara who jumped out of bounds and then Randy Johnson ticketed with interference and of course you take the interference automatic first down and 15 yards. Well you are seeing a gambling defense. You saw a safety blitz coming. Danny Lara from his safety spot approaching in the line of scrimmage on the dead run. Couldn't quite stop. That was the offsides that he's signaling. And the interference, the defensive interference was of course against Randy Johnson. Bobos have now been penalized for 36 yards this evening. decision time, but they'll march it up the field. The Aztecs on the move, leading 31-7. to 11-13 to go in the third quarter, and here's the call. Defensive interference here. First down. Mike Shepard discussing something. Now let's watch this from the end zone view. Now here Randy is not playing the ball. He's actually tackling Broom before the ball arrives. Unquestionably interference. And probably felt like he was beat, Gary, and yeah. rather do that than give up the touchdown. <laughs> Santos, first and ten at the 23. Ewan on a little counter and will muscle his way to about the 18, inside the 18 of New Mexico. A gain of a good four that time for San Diego State. Danny, Laura, and Randy Johnson finally combining to sandwich Hewitt and bring him down. Hewitt has a knack. If they pull a guard or somebody in from, he has a knack of getting on that the hip of the pulling lineman and just kind of slowing down, waiting for him to create a hole, and then darting from there. And he's awfully tough to tackle, even on the runs inside the tackles. Second down and six. Hewitt to run it. Heads wide, picks his way to the 15 and will be surging forward to the 14. They'll need a little more than a yard on this third down play. Will San Diego stay? Steve Webster, Troy Pulis getting up there, tackling Hewitt. John Bell, a freshman tackle from Del Norte High School, is in on that play. Hewitt's having a busy night. Santos now facing third down. We'll call it a short two. 
and will pass. They swing it out. That's Hewitt, and he breaks one tackle, breaks another as the first down, and is out of bounds outside the 10 around the 11. That is just outstanding second effort because the Lobos had him stopped, but he found a way, as the good athletes do, to make the play, get the first down, and the Aztecs are knocking on the door now. This number 32 in the black uniform, he gives a lot of inspiration to the little guy who wants to play this game. Look at that. Run right out of two tackles. Troy Clewis and Jeff McDonald's and Chris Houston finally has to corral him and throw him out of bounds. First and ten, San Diego State at the 11 of New Mexico. I backs behind Santos. Hewitt runs it again. Reads it outside and is dumped at the 10-yard line. A gain of only a yard. Good job by the Lobos defensively that time. Clay Orison and Torrey Edwards both over there. And they didn't let Hewitt get outside. Torrey Edwards, 47 in your picture there, did a really fine play because he had to fight off the blocker. The, man, the guard pulling was on Torrey Edwards, and he did not relinquish the blocker, and he did not lose sight of the ball carrier and was able to get on and make the tackle. Hewitt has eclipsed 1,000 yards in total yardage offensively this season. He's gone to 1,041 with his rushing performance tonight. And he Santos just... dumps it in the end zone, touchdown. Boy, you really can't throw it any better than that. The coverage was not that bad. D'Angelo Mitchell catches his first pass of the evening, but for a touchdown, and looked like Randy Johnson on the coverage, but Mitchell just read the pass well, and Santos threw it perfectly. And I believe that Santos changed the call at the line of scrimmage when he saw the coverage. He knew what he could do on this play, and he made a ver an audible call at the line of scrimmage to change off from a previously called play. And that's 304 yards passing for Todd Santos as he eclipses another mark. Ackerson with the extra point. He got it. He hasn't missed one all year. We'll tell you more about Santos when we come back. 9.06 to go. Third quarter. 38-7. San Diego State leading it. Acura legend luxury touring sedan. Motor Trend's import car of the year. Fast. Precision driving that is second to none. Rated number one in overall customer satisfaction by J.D. Powers in two and four-door models. Fully equipped with all the amenities your green car needs. Test drive one today. Exclusively sold at Montano Acura. Located just west of I-25 in Montgomery on Montano by Price Club. The Acura legend. The spirit of Ajax keeps shining through with unbeatable prices. Take this brand new single wide starting at just $126 per month. Only Ajax can offer such great prices like luxurious double wides from just $253 per month. Our spirit will not be beat. To prove it, huge triple wides start at $398 per month. At Ajax Factory Outlet, we guarantee the lowest possible prices and the largest inventory. Take I-40 West to the top of Nine Mile Hill and exit 149. At Ajax, we've got the spirit and it shows. <laughs> Back at Jack Murphy Stadium, Jim Lawwell along with Gary Ness. San Diego State leading at 38-7. Todd Santos continues his assault on the record book. He now has unofficially 11,356 yards passing in his career. He has now tied Jim McMahon's record of 17 games in which he has passed for 300 or more yards. Those are some records. This is the seventh time this season he's thrown for over 300 yards. Mathis breaks the kickoff return out across the 30, an inspired run by Terrence out to about the 37-yard line. It was Randy Peterson, a reserve wide receiver on the special teams play, that finally came in to make the tackle. Some happy faces on that sideline. D'Angelo Mitchell talking with Robert Claiborne. Mitchell with his first catch of the evening, a touchdown reception, and it's 38-7 San Diego State. This is Lobo Football on KGSW TV 14, Albuquerque, New Mexico. 14 is a great entertainer. Down the field, complete to Mike Henderson. And the Lobos with a big pass play, moving to Aztec territory. 21-yard pass. I like that. I believe the Lobos need to do more of that, passing downfield. They have receivers down there, and I do believe they have the time. A fake to Scott Howard helps a little bit on the time there. You see Sam Taylor and Barry Luther providing the protection. Nice catch by another true freshman, Mike Henderson. Scott Howard tries the line and doesn't get much. 
And off to number 26, Scott Howard. Not Global much. football here on KGSW TV 14 made possible Stop in part by Coors Beer. Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one, and a couple of cold Coors will taste awfully good after this encounter. Excuse me, Jim, I was just going to say, it wasn't much of a hole there for Scott Howard on that particular run. This time, a little draw with Reggie Rogers, and Rogers close to first and ten territory. Chuck Nixon with the tackle on Reggie Rogers. Better hold at the line of scrimmage on that one. Scott Maney, the center. Now, see him blocking out. Oh, and Terrence Donaldson, nice block, turned his man out. And then Scott comes up on the linebacker. That's the anatomy of a good hole at the line of scrimmage. So Garrison with third down and a short two will pass. Complete to Terrence Mathis. They have the first down outside the 30-yard line. And the Lobo is going with a lot of short stuff, but what you'd like to see more of is just flat going downfield with it. Yes. The short stuff should complement the long passes. And, and, you know, you get into a, a pattern and sometimes you don't realize it, that you're throwing all short stuff. Well, the defense adjusts to that. What you need to do to, is, is to have a balance. You, you need to be able to throw the ball downfield to open up the short routes and vice versa. Scott Howard alone running back. First and 10 Garrison outside the Aztec 30. Deep downfield the Mathis broken up. Ball was underthrown. Streaking in on the coverage was Clark Mosley. San Diego State with some gifted linebackers and defensive backs. Oh, and, and they're young. At Maury Paul, number 59, 230-pound two, linebacker. Defender White there against, uh, you know, there, was, there seemed like there was a mix-up. Terrence Mathis didn't know what pattern to run in that play. There's Mike Shepard at Lambert beside him. Second and ten Lobo. At the 30 of San Diego State, Garrison being pressured. Sets up the screen, dumps it off. Rogers has room. Penalty marker thrown. Looks like a clip downfield. Rogers out of bounds around the 15-yard line. Chuck Nixon driving him out of bounds, but it looked like it was a needless clip by New Mexico downfield and away from the football. Or it might have been defensive holding. Because it didn't appear, as you said, it needless because, yeah, it was defensive holding. He wasn't in the area of the play, so if it had been a clip, it would have been needless. Holding on the defense. The point. First down. Well, I, I want to thank you for covering for me on that, but... <laughs> It was holding downfield. Now this screen is well set up. Now they do block for a couple of counts, and then Barry retreats a little extra to draw the defense in, lob it over the defense. The linemen have gotten out in front. There's Reggie Rogers. Garrison is passed for 172 yards. Here's Rogers on the sweep across the five. Touchdown, New Mexico. So the Lobos drive it down and score. Nice run by Reggie Rogers, and what he did, he made a good cut inside, inside. Now they're going for two. You saw Coach Shepard raise two fingers, going inside the of the end. Now there's the cut inside the end. John Duff out in front, make, and Al Owens making blocks for Reggie Rogers. Well, they will not go for two now as they change their minds, and Rick Walsh will kick the extra point. Bad snap, but they get it down, and Walsh hits it pretty good. So is 6.47 remaining in the third quarter here in San Diego, California. Your score now, the San Diego State University Aztecs 38, New Mexico 14. Stay right with us. We'll be right back. During the busy Thanksgiving holiday, almost any hour of the day seems like rush hour. That's why Smith's is extending the hours of our policy to end long lines through Wednesday, November 25th. From 10 a.m. until 9 p.m., we'll open another check stand whenever there are more than two people in line, giving you rush hour service 11 hours a day. Because Smith's knows that a long wait in line is no holiday. For savings plus service, Smith, we are the one. When the Lobo football team hits the road, it relies on Polak Total Travel. Polak has been helping the Mexicans see the world for over 20 years, and we've been backing the Lobos just as long. 
You might say we believe in the value of lasting relationships. And that's why, win or lose, you'll see Bolak Total Travel supporting Lobo football. We hope you'll attend the next game. And why not take along someone who's new to Lobo football? The Lobos and Bolak Total Travel appreciate your support. Back at Jack Murphy Stadium, 6.47 to go in the third quarter. 38 to 14, San Diego State leading it, but the Lobos drive it down and tally. Little onside kick, and San Diego State will fall on it and have it in Lobo territory around the 47-yard line. One David those. Cooper read that onside kick well. That probably would have found some teams a little off guard. You know, you have to be a little bit lucky there. David Cooper got the good hop on that ground ball as a shortstop right there. So the onside kick doesn't work, so the Aztecs have excellent field position. There's the Lobo drive, seven plays, 63 yards, and they needed that. Give the defense a bit of a rest. Santos now with wide receivers everywhere. Lobo showing blitz. Santos in trouble, and they will sack him back around the 45-yard line. That's the fifth sack for New Mexico. Santos has been sacked a lot this year, and that's been one of the problems for San Diego State. They'll finish five and six probably, but their offensive line protection hasn't been what it was last year. At one point, there were 11 defenders on the line of scrimmage there. Santos didn't quite read this quick enough to get the ball away. Not all 11 rushed, of course. We saw Jeff McDonald back up, but there's Torrey Edwards, who eventually did get to Santos. High back formation on second down and 18. Hewitt on a draw, and he'll go nowhere. He's caught from behind and brought to the turf. Orlando Lavelle had him, and then Brian McCabe finished him off. Lavelle just kind of had him by the jersey yeah. and said, stop. What's that game the kids play, uh, a bunny hop or something like that? It looked like they were playing bunny hop, because Orlando had a hand on each hip, and he was saying, hey, come back here. Orlando, a senior from New Orleans. We should mention that San Diego State is using numerous players, wide receivers, running backs, and making changes in the offensive line. There it is, third and 19 for the Aztecs. Santos in trouble, dumps it off downfield, picked off. Fine interception by Randy Johnson of New Mexico, and the Lobos take over outside their own 30. Now there is how you play one-on-one -on -one coverage when the blitz is on. Clay Orison forced that pass early, number 49. And see, this is man-for-man -man coverage. Really, they're beyond the safety, Jeff McDonald. And Randy Johnson is on his own, and he stepped in at the right moment, picked it off. Beautiful interception by Randy Johnson. Santos, to throw as much as he does, doesn't have that many interceptions really for a college quarterback. That's his 14th, but they put it up 50 times a game. Garrison back to throw. Dumps it off to John Duff. Duff reverses his field, but they... Now he gets away. And Duff across midfield, all the way down to the 44-yard line. It looked like they had him, and Duff accelerated and got away. He sure did, didn't he? When it appeared as though he was just going to make a three-yard gain because he was going too far laterally, he did turn the corner and get upfield. 21 yards on the pass. I believe that puts Garrison over the 200-yard mark tonight, passing. 507 to go third quarter. Ooh, look at that straight arm by Duff. That helped him, that straight arm. It's 38-14, San Diego State. Lobo's moving. It's 193 yards passing for Garrison unofficially right now. Barry looking to go over the 200 mark, going deep with it. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Terrence Mathis. You can't cover it any better than Mario Mitchell did that time. And Mario has been impressive tonight, but after watching the Aztecs on film, we knew he was one of the finer defensive backs in the Western Athletic Conference. I believe Mario Mitchell has a future as a pro as a cornerback. And you saw him running stride for stride with Terrence Mathis, who is almost 100%. Coach Mike Shepard making his decisions, signaling in plays. Owens to the bottom of the screen, Mathis to the top of the screen, Garrison out of the shotgun. Swing it to Rodgers on a sweep that never materializes. 
Dodgers dumped back at the 49-yard line by Chuck Nixon, who's had a very active evening for San Diego State. Chuck Nixon's a nickel back in this defense. You see him lined up right behind the, the uh, line of scrimmage. Now he's going to chase this play down from behind. With their speed, their team speed, it's awfully difficult to run wide against San Diego State. Scott Howard is alone running back. Third and a ton for Barry Garrison. Downfield, Mathis incomplete, nearly picked off. Went past Mathis and off the fingertips of Clark Moses. So it's fourth down now, and we'll see if the Lobos punter throw all caution to the wind and go for it. Hunting teams coming on. San Diego State cheerleading staff looks like they're having a good time tonight. They have lots to cheer about. Albrecht tries to hang it up and will. Gilbreth brings it up the field, breaks tackles, and he's out to the 25-yard line. That's a good return by Monty Gilbreth. 34-yard punt, but the return, that's about 13, so Brett Heber on the special teams made the tackle. We're going to take a break. San Diego's on top. They've got the football when we come back. Hi, I'm Doug Adams, the new owner of Sirius Restaurant and Lounge. I would like to invite all of you to come in and see how we're different and better than ever before. So come right on in and join us and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. At Siri's Restaurant, we offer you fresh fish at its finest and a variety menu, plus a magnificent view of the Sandia Mountains. Well, along with Gary Ness, back at Jack Murphy Stadium, San Diego State with a football of their own 25, leading it 38 to 14. Just over four minutes to go in the third period of play, and they'll run it with Hewitt. He gets outside, and Hewitt will be ridden out of bounds around the 30, a gain of five. Something positive tonight for the New Mexico defense. They have given up 38 points, but defensively, they've been tough at the line of scrimmage. Against the run, the New Mexico defense has allowed only 30, 34 yards, and 12 of 30 run, 31 runs have lost yardage against the New Mexico defense. So they've been that. Now that, however, does include the sacks on Sanis. Second and five for San Diego State at their own 30. Santos wants to throw, dumps it off, tipped and picked off by Musa Kanicki. And he'll take it to the 13-yard line. So the Lobos will be in scoring position now. A touchdown here. It's 38-21. Hey, maybe you got an opportunity to get back in the football game. What a play. This is a lineman's dream. And there's Big Musa Kaniki, who deflected the ball out of Sanis' hands and comes down with the interception. Now watch him from the left side of your screen. This is a screen pass out to Reed. But Kaniki gets up, leaps for it. Hey, that's a good rebound. Gary Colson would be proud of him for that. So Garrison first and 10 at the 13 at San Diego State Territory. Scott Howard sweeps it, puts his head down, and goes all the way to the seven-yard line. Good effort by Scott Howard. Terrence Donaldson and one of the Aztecs now in the shoving match around the five-yard line. Here we see Musa Kaniki getting the congratulations from his teammates. And Todd's a little upset, and he's had Two interceptions this half. I keep wanting to... Yeah, it is Sanus. Uh, Sanus, but I... <clears throat> you know, it's time to think about uh, maybe he's relaxing a little bit against the New Mexico defense. And... Garrison will bootleg this time. Fires towards the end zone. Touchdown. The catch, John Duff, the tight end, who's having a big evening for New Mexico, and it's 38-20. So the Lobos are having a good third quarter. 
And that will put Garrison over 200 yards and an even 200 passing thus far in the football game. And that bootleg pass play has been a gold mine for the Lobos this year. We've seen that in virtually every game they've scored that same particular bootleg with a tight end cross. And that's the old, one of the oldest plays in the, in the passing game in football and one of the most difficult to cover. Lobos are going to go for two this time. In motion, Al Owens to the top of your screen. Again, they roll out, fired into the end zone, and broken up. And the penalty marker dropped. Probably be an interference on San Diego State. That'll move it to the one-and-a-half-yard line. Clarence Nunn was over on the coverage. Well, this is the same type of interference that the Lobos have been called against the San Diego State receivers this quarter. You get isolated one for one. You know you're beaten. And so the only thing you can do is play the receiver and not the ball. Denny Stoles, a head coach at San Diego State. They were waltzing, leading 38-7. Now it's 38-20. 3-12 to go in the third quarter. So Lobos are edging back in the football game. They move it to the one-and-a-half yard line, and the Lobos will go for two again, but they change personnel, indicating they might run the football. Defensive pass interference here. Retry. And I think what Barry was asking the bench was, do I want to keep it in the center of the field? When you, when you go for a two-point conversion, you can move the ball anywhere you want to on the three-yard line between the hash marks, but they did leave it in the middle. Duff in motion. They're going to pass it. Garrison in trouble. Penalty marker down. Barry scrambles, scrambles, tosses, intercepted in the end zone. I believe the penalty will go against New Mexico, but we'll wait to sort it out. What he originally wanted to do, that was the bootleg coming back the opposite way. Let's see now. No, it's against San Diego State. That'll move it to the uh, two-foot line. To the sneak range. <laughs> Quarterback sneak range. But that was the reverse of the touch, the mirror of the touchdown play. They were going to throw the bootleg, but the linebackers would not let John Duff clear the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense, retry. So now, inside the one-yard line. The Lobos going for two, trailing at 38 to 20. Two tight ends, don't no, check that. The dive, and they get the two, so it's 38-22. Scott Howard diving in to get the two-point conversion. So the Lobos are edging back in the football game. 38-22. Now for the best entertainment, turn to KGSW TV 14 weeknights, starting at 5 with two hours of comedy, including Emmy winner Michael J. Fox and Family Ties at 6. You can see it all right here on KGSW TV 14, The Great Entertainer. So the third quarter's been a good one for New Mexico. They've outscored the Aztecs 15 to seven. However, they do still trail it by 16, 38, 22 as Scott Howard dives in for two. Well, we've seen one nice long touchdown drive. And there we see Scott Howard's face without the helmet. And, and then they've taken advantage of the turnover with the interception by Musa Kaniki. So the Lobos have been both opportunistic and they've worked hard for, what they, for their 14 points this quarter. Ajax Mobile Homes at KGSW TV 14 team up to bring you Lobo football. Ajax Mobile Homes, they've got the spirit and it shows. Lobos have shown a little spirit of their own here in the third quarter. Down 38-7, they could have kind of given up on it, but they've played hard and played with some enthusiasm. And they'll need that to carry over when they go to Arkansas next Saturday. We'll have it live at noon. See the shifting there by the kicking team. Will we see another onside attempt? Last time Albrecht approached the ball, but didn't kick it. This time he does. It'll be Rowe to bring back the kick. And he's got room. Look at him go. He could be gone. He needs one block. He couldn't get it. He does break tackles and go to the 19 in New Mexico territory. Well, that was the last thing you wanted to do after you get an opportunity to get back in it. Yes, you're right. And from our vantage point up here in the press box, we could see this developing at the bottom of the screen. 
The wedge was forming, and there were no white shirts around it. There, you see how free he's... There isn't a white shirt in the in the picture until right now at the sideline in front of the low bowl bench. Now, Danny Lara and Randy Johnson eventually chase him down. In fact, if Danny Lara doesn't hang on, he gets into the end zone. 70-yard kick return for Patrick Rowe, and here's Hewitt muscling his way for about eight yards. It'll be second and short for San Diego State at the 11 of New Mexico. There was nary a white shirt visible on that return by Patrick Rowe. San Diego State will probably finish the season five up and six down, but quite frankly, with the talent they have, they're probably, and there's Rowe and the kickoff return we told you about, a better football team than that. And next season, I don't think it'll be a good experience to try to play them. Rowe is just a freshman. You have to wonder, as you say, Jim, with all the talent, why they're not on top of the conference. Hewitt with a big hole inside the five. It'll be goal to go, San Diego State. I'll mark it outside the four-yard line as they unpile. Hewitt is a junior. Santos and Reed in the backfield will graduate. Hewitt a junior. Gilbert the sophomore. Jackson the starting wide receiver a junior. Kerry Reed Martin a junior. Hewitt is a junior college transfer. You see his numbers, three touchdowns. Has broken San Diego State University rushing touchdown record this season. Hewitt breaks a tackle, dives, touchdown Aztecs. That'll put San Diego State in the 40s at the 152 mark remaining third quarter. San Diego State wisely used an unbalanced line. They only had two men left of the center. They had four linemen to the right, and they ran to the long side. So what he does is he just picks his hole. See one guard drop out and pull, and he's got Reed out in front. If the defense doesn't adjust to an unbalanced line, he just picks his hole, and there he, and there he ends up in the end zone. Hewitt with four touchdowns tonight, 24 overall this season, and 18 rushing touchdowns. And now San Diego State will go for two. A whistle. Now... A penalty on the play. Lobos call timeout. Our score, 44-22. Aztecs going for two. Is that an answer to the Lobos going for two? Well, I don't know if the 14 points that the Lobos scored in the third quarter scared them or not. If, if it did, then that's why they're going for two. Uh, or Tyler the, Ackerson's coming on now. So. Or they they may be trying to get, get a, an extra score in there, but uh, we see the kicking team come on now. Lobo basketball action continues on KGSW TV 14 on Monday, November the 30th. We have NIT action this Monday, but a week later, Western New Mexico coming in to play the Lobos. Tip-off will be at 10. We're taped delayed that night, and it's UCLA Monday night. Ticket sales are high enough, and they probably could possibly be that high. We will be live with the UCLA game. But don't forget Western New Mexico a week from Monday. There's Mike Shepard, the Lobo head coach. And Ackerson, the kicker, has left the field. Todd Sanis has come back, so it appears now they will go for two again. It's yep. going to be an answer to the Lobos going for two. It's yeah, sure. Now watch, watch for the Lobos to play not in a goal line defense, but their regular defense against, let's see, yeah, there'll be two wide receivers. This is a middle of the field defense. Santos to throw it, dumps it off, and they get the two-point conversion. That'll make it 46 to 22. Now, I guess San Diego State feels like they were playing so many people offensively and defensively, and they had a big lead, and the Lobos scored, and, and are they saying, hey, we can score when we want to, and uh, even if you score a couple times, don't get cocky and go for two. Uh, is that the message, or? Well... You could be right, Jim. It's got to be. Uh, yeah, you, you could be right. I I don't, really don't understand why they went for two in this situation, but but they did. It's two more points for uh, scored by Martin Reed. That's just simply got to be what it was. Yeah, yeah. You got to wonder, too. Sanis has broken every record he can possibly break, and... Uh, the only thing left to break are a few bones if he's playing out his career here after, after the issue's been decided. 
so uh, or maybe they think he'll make a bigger impression on the pros if he scores 50 or more points well there's lots of interesting side notes to all of this <laughs> that's for sure Ackerson will kick it off bottom line Aztecs 46 New Mexico 22 a high short kickoff and Mathis will bring it across the 20 to the 25 break a tackle and dive across the 30 to the 31 yard line and the Lobos start right there Casey Copeland finally made the stop on Terrence Mathis and there is Terrence Mathis back healthy again after a couple of weeks where he tried to play when he quite frankly probably shouldn't have tried to play well I enjoy watching Terrence Mathis play football we saw him right there he ran up the wedge was stopped cold he ran up in there and just seemed to bounce off of everyone get another seven or eight yards so dangerous as a receiver he can break the play dead ball personal foul run back first down Tacks on 15 yards to the return, so bring it up uh, close to midfield. Not to belabor the point, but second team, some third team, some young people playing defensively, and the Lobos get a couple of touchdowns against them. The Lobos go for two, and Denny Stoles comes in with a first team offense after the big return and says, okay, you know, we were being nice, but now we're going to go for two. I think that's what, what it was, and, and I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. I think you may be right. I, I think you may be right. <laughs> Because every indication we saw Rodgers with almost a first down there was that they weren't doing that tonight, trying to run it up, yeah. using a lot of people. And Coaches are funny. They all have egos, like everyone else. Reggie Rodgers, that was a fake reverse on that play, and he ran it out of bounds, got a first down. Well, he's a little shy, Gary. It's second and inches, and Garrison dumps it off to Scott Howard, who's hit hard and slung to the turf. No penalty marker drop. Clark Moses made the hit. Now, Moses wasn't going to start tonight, but he's letting the coaching staff know that next season he'd like to. The hit was fine. The throw to the ground was, uh, was, after, was after the fact. Now we have another tight end coming in. Al Owens leaving. Steve House is coming in to play a second tight end in the short yardage situation. The dive, and they get it easily. Scott Howard breaks it all the way to the 32 in San Diego State Territory. Good job of blocking up front, especially by Scott Maney. The senior center of the Lobos will miss him sorely. He's one of the finest centers in the Western Athletic Conference. Regretfully, his senior year will be marred by the fact the Lobos will probably finish winless. But what a year Scott has had, despite the fact that he has a, had an awfully sore shoulder and had to miss a couple of games in the middle of the year. Scott's from this area, Southern California, and his parents usually follow us wherever we've played. We've seen Scott's parents. Garrison to throw, now scrambling, grab from behind, gets away. Good hustle by Barry, and now fires incomplete. He's trying to go to Scott Howard downfield. You know, I really believe Terrence Mathis on the bottom, of, or on this particular side of the field, thought that, that Barry was tackled or the play was dead because he stopped running. Now when he gets to the sideline, watch Barry look back to his left to try to find somebody. Yeah. Then he threw it into the ground to Scott. That wasn't a bad throw. That was to keep to avoid the loss. Garrison in trouble. They set up the screen and Reggie Rogers will dive forward past the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. It'll be third and long for Garrison and the Lobos at the 32 in San Diego State Territory. Now, Time running out third quarter. Gary, we're down to 39 seconds and counting and the Aztecs leading 46 to 22. Here is that situation again, Jim, where they're playing New Mexico for the short pass. They need to get it downfield. Out of the eye. In motion, Terrence Mathis. Garrison looking for Mathis over the middle, can't find him, and now they get him and sack him. Obviously, you could see that one developing from up here, and so did San Diego State. They blanketed Mathis, and when Garrison couldn't dump it to him, he was in a world of trouble. Second sack for the Aztecs tonight. Corey Paul, the freshman, will pick up the sack. He also has an interception tonight. 
We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. It's the end of the third quarter. San Diego State 46, New Mexico 22. Join the Lobo Club. Pass it on. A million dollars for Lobo Athletics. That's the goal. We're alumni and Lobo fans just like you. Chip in as little as $25 or score a touchdown with up to $5,000. It's tax deductible. You'll be an important part of a stronger Wolf Pack. Plus, you'll have a ball with reserve parking, priority seating, and program recognition. Join the Lobo Club. Call 277-5014. Quality. Priced right. That's what sets Safeway apart from any other food store. Celebrate Thanksgiving with all the trimmings. Medallion Young Hen or Tom Turkeys are only 35 cents a pound while supplies last. Quantity restrictions may apply. Don't forget the Golden Fresh Yams. Four pounds for just one dollar. And Banquet Pumpkin Pies. A 20-ounce pie is just 79 cents through November 24th. Find values like these every day at Safeway. Open Thanksgiving 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Safeway. Quality. Priced right. The Lobos to punt the football as we start the fourth quarter of play. The attendance tonight, 21,392. It's kind of a cool, kind of a damp evening here in San Diego, California. There were some who thought with Santos leaving, this being his last game, he'd have about 30,000, but this really is a California-type enjoyable evening record weather and uh, nearly 22,000. Albrecht will punt it. There's his average for the evening. He gets it off. Gilbreth returns across the 20, 25, 31-yard line. Finally dumped. Troy Cluis made the stop for New Mexico as we start the fourth quarter. San Diego State with the football leading at 46 to 22. And Todd Sanis runs on the field into the huddle. I wonder if you know if they're going to try to go the entire game with Todd. You and I talked about this at lunch. You thought after 300 they'd take him out, and I told you I thought they might let him try to go for four or 500 tonight. It's his last game. And as usual, you proved right. <laughs> <laughs> Downfield and incomplete. Intended receiver Monty Gilbreth, and now the interference marker dropped about five seconds after the play culminates. I don't mind them calling penalties. It's just when they call them that late, it seems like someone on the sideline yells at the guy and he says, okay, what the heck, here you go. <laughs> I mean, you really get that impression sometimes that coaches officiate games from the sideline. Well, I thought a couple of plays in the, a couple of decisions in the first half were questionable. But... Defensive pass interference here. First down. That moves at 15 yards up the gridiron, and it'll be first and 10 San Diego State at their own 46-yard line. The linesman was the one who threw the flag somewhat late, as you described. The field judge downfield did not, uh, did not, who was, who was closer to the play, said nothing, or did not. But the linesman is closer to the sideline, and Coach Denny Stoles and his assistants. <laughs> okay, I believe your point. Well, a gain of about four on that running play. And another penalty marker is dropped. All kinds of flags on this play. Okay. Go! We got a participation foul here. Are we going to have 12 men on the field? That's what it's called. What is the WAC record for 12 men on the field the most times in a season? <laughs> Mark Gardner, our producer, says 12. I think the Lobos have... Illegal substitution here. First down. I hold it. Now, our... <laughs> this is not only 12 <laughs> men on the field, but this is really good. Our spotter says that there were 12 men on the field and one without a helmet. Now, I don't know. <laughs> That's like going to war without a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the classics. Now, Mike is discussing it. He says, you can't count him. He didn't have a helmet on. With Mr. Poole. Believe it or not, 14-38 remaining in the football game. 46-22 San Diego State. Well, 
Mm -hmm. All Mike Shepard can do is smile. Here are some of the Aztec cheerleaders doing their megaphone deal. Rudy Valley in disguise, obviously, here. Winchester Cathedral. Okay. And now, timeout on the field is called. 46-22 is the score right now. San Diego State on top. It'll be first and five for San Diego State at the 49 in Lobo territory. Tonight, immediately following Lobo football on KGSW TV 14, it's the original and the classic MASH. MASH stars Donald Sutherland. You can see it tonight right after Lobo football here on KGSW TV 14. Gary, if we hurry, we can probably get over to Balboa's Sports Grill, and they have four satellite dishes, so we can probably get it on the satellite and watch MASH. That's right. Great football game in that movie. Mike Shepard is still continuing his discussion with the line judge at, on the, the near sideline, as you can see. Santos first and five, just inside Lobo territory. Hit, fumbles, Aztrex after it, ball loose again. And they tell us San Diego State has retained possession of the football. They'll lose a couple of yards on the play, but they're fortunate they didn't lose possession of the football. Troy Reed with the fumble recovery. And Sanis, <coughs> from, Sanis has been sacked four times in this game. And this is, an, excuse me, five I've been corrected here. This is, would have been the fifth sack had he not fumbled. Now, there are some risks in leaving your quarterback in there. They're, really, Todd Sanis has nothing more to prove to anybody, either in this stadium or in the in the uh, the booth where the pro scouts are. A little draw play, and this time it's Tommy Booker, and Booker gets, well, he's shy of the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long now for In fact, not to belabor the point, Jim, but in the last three pass plays that San Diego State has called, Sanis has been intercepted twice, and that previous, the fumble on the previous play. Well, I'm going to need a neck brace after this telecast. The guy's reaching in front of me here. My headset has nearly taken a tumble many times. Of course, there's another explanation. Maybe they don't have another quarterback, huh? Could be. They're going to sack Santos this time, and it'll be fourth down at San Diego State. We'll have to punt. So the Lobos have... Really been good as far as the sacks here tonight. That's their sixth, but they do trail at 46 to 22. Clay Orison, number 49. Watch him rush from the bottom. Torrey Edwards from the top, and they sandwich him, and then joined by Musa Kaniki. Wayne Ross to punt it. Gets it off. Hits it pretty well. Nice spiraling kick. Terrence Mathis will grab it and makes the fair catch at the 22-yard line. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, the Lobos have it. They trail it 46-22 to 22 here in San Diego. At Sunshine Buick GMC, we want to see you take to those great New Mexico roads in a new Buick Century. Mid-sized highway magic with luxury designed to last. Drive away price at just $11,999, and that includes tax title, license, freight, and options. So come see us at Sunshine View at GMC and put this century on a great New Mexico road today. The great New Mexico road leads to sunshine. It's the right for you at the right time. It's the silver bullet that is safe to find at the new way. To go to town, the silver bullet won't slow you down. So come on with the crew. Back at Jack Murphy Stadium, 12 minutes, 32 seconds to go in the football game. San Diego State leading at 46-22, following Steve Albrecht's, or the punt rather by Wayne Ross of 41 yards. The Lobos have it at their own 22-yard line. Barry 
Garrison. Wide receivers to each side of the field. With time over the middle. Nice catch by Terrence Mathis. Dropped at the 39-yard line. A gain of 17 yards and a first and 10 for New Mexico. Garrison threaded the needle that time. He did indeed. Under the tutelage of Steve Fairchild. We mentioned it earlier, but I'd like to reiterate it. What a job Steve Fairchild has done in developing Barry Garrison, new offense. Of course, Mike Shepard's been a lot of that, too. Mike Shepard also shares in the coaching of the quarterbacks and the wide receivers. First down for New Mexico. Scott Howard in motion to the top of the screen as they pitch it to Reggie Rogers. He breaks one tackle. They spread him out and drop him at the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. Reggie Rogers the ball the cornerbacks on the defense for San Diego State are up so quickly when the play is, when they see sweep coming. If uh, the Lobos could put somebody in a position to, to run the sweep play and throw the pass out of it, the halfback pass, it would be a touchdown. Terrence Mathis, who has already run from the halfback spot once tonight, was a high school quarterback and is capable of throwing that off that halfback pass. Little uh, shuttle pitch, and with room, Reggie Rogers across midfield and out of bounds at the 46-yard line in San Diego State Territory. That worked well for the Lobos. First time we've seen that this evening. Indeed it has. Now he's going to retreat to a point. This is like a draw play. You let the defense come in. Brett Ferrignes gets too deep. So short pass, that officially goes in the statistics as a forward pass. First and 10, New Mexico at the San Diego State 46-yard line. Al Owens in motion to the bottom of your screen. Garrison straight back. Pump fix. Now incomplete over the head of John Duff. That time, Barry would probably be called guilty of what they call busy feet. <laughs> and there are his numbers. He's had another good ball game. Well, he could hear those big, bigger feet closing in on him, and he did the wise thing. He got rid of it. That James was really the epitome <laughs> of busy feet when he would drop back to pass. Oh, he was exciting to watch. <laughs> he was an adventure every he, down. He drove defensive linemen crazy. Many times would call a play and then totally deviate from it and be rather successful after he did. Here's Scott Howard. Not much for Scott. It'll be third down. We'll call it nine yards to go for New Mexico. Big third down play to keep this drive alive. New Mexico needs to keep it alive and get back on the scoreboard here and keep some pressure on San Diego State. High backs behind Barry Garrison. Third down, Lobos to pass. Deep downfield, kicked off. Boy, that was beautiful. Gerald Williams went up and brought it down. Now a penalty marker will be thrown. That's the sixth turnover unofficially for New Mexico tonight, and San Diego State will take over. Gerald Williams timed that perfectly. He did. He got inside position on Duff. And out fought him for the ball, and John Duff in making the tackle, coming back, did a good job to recover right away on the interceptor, but he got a piece of the face mask. So Garrison has thrown four interceptions. And he had five at New Mexico State, so it's not his high for face the season. Face mask, there, first down. That was a big factor in helping the Aggies to that 17-14 win. Now watch, see... Defender has position here. He jumps in front of John Duff. John actually gets hands on the ball. Now you see him come back. He did have the face mask. This time, San Diego State will go to the run, and uh, they get a first down and more as Tommy Booker goes into Lobo territory into the 44-yard line. Tommy Booker ran out of one tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Let's see this. Lead play, the fullback Reed in front of him. Runs right out of Steve Webster's tackle there. Covering, protecting the ball. Danny Lara has to bring him down. Santos 
First and ten, they mark it just inside the 45-yard line. Booker bobbles it, loses it, and cradles it back at midfield. A loss of six for San Diego State. It'll be second down and 16 yards to go. We're under 10 minutes remaining, 9 minutes and 48 seconds and counting as we speak from Jack Murphy Stadium here in San Diego, California. Lobo basketball coming up Monday night. Second round of the Big Apple NIT UCLA at University Arena. Play was designed to be a counter play. Brooker was looking for the hole and lost track of the football, but he managed to fall on it. Final football game next Saturday at noon. Gary and I will be in Little Rock. Completion to Alfred Jenkins, or Jackson on the sideline. Alfred Jenkins, of course, played for the Atlanta Falcons for many years. He's not here tonight, however. There was also an Alfred Jackson who played for the Atlanta Falcons as well. All righty. And there's also Alfred E. Newman, who never played <laughs> football, but <laughs> has made his own impact on the world. That was a harmless completion. Troy Clewis played off of the man and let him catch the ball, drove him right out for a three-yard gain. That's not going to hurt you right here. No, it won't. Third down, we'll call it 10. There's Todd Santos. Out of the shotgun. Now scrambling. Deep downfield has a man. Incomplete. He had Alfred Jackson for the touchdown, but he overthrew him. When the quarterback breaks free, and you're downfield defending against the uh, receivers, when the quarterback breaks free, there's a tendency to come up to, to support on the run or to ignore your receivers a while. And when they did that, you can't do that with people like Alfred Jackson. He's just simply too fast, or Claiborne. They just outrun you and... Wayne Ross on to punt it for San Diego State. Hangs it up trying to pin the Lobos in a hole. Lobos let it roll and the Aztecs can't get it. It rolls into the end zone. <laughs> right between the legs. That's tough goalie job there. Error on the shortstop. We'll be right back. Aztecs lead it by 24. Did you know that as your business becomes more sophisticated and demanding, so do your copy needs? Renalta has designed the 470Z copier for the growing office. At American Office, we have that 470Z designed to grow along with you. Did you know that American Office sells more copiers than anyone else in New Mexico? Plus, after your purchase, if you have a problem, our service department will be there in two to four hours to solve your problem. I guarantee it. Or my name isn't Mike Nigro. New Mexico's number one volume import dealership, American Toyota, has the lowest price in New Mexico on two-wheel drive standard bed trucks, only $65.55. Or get a free $651 value pack on a select group of two- and four-wheel drive trucks. You've made us number one in volume sales, and we're saying thank you with the lowest truck price in New Mexico, only $65.55. Our way of saying we do our best to make you happy. Oh, Toyota American Toyota. KGSW TV 14 will follow the Lobo basketball team every step of the way in that NIT Big Apple preseason tournament. Well, Monday night it'll be UCLA as UCLA and the Lobos have advanced. It'll be in University Arena. We'll have it here on KGSW TV 14 with ticket sales going as they are as a possibility we could be live with that one. And we'll tell you more about those ticket sales. Garrison scrambling, fires downfield complete. The catch made and cradled by Terrence Mathis, very close to a first and ten. In fact, he has it at the 32-yard line. Good job by Barry Garrison to buy some time. And then Terrence Mathis, reading that he was in trouble, broke off his pattern, came back for the football, caught it for the first down. Season ticket holders who want to go to that NIT game Monday night, from 8 to 11 tomorrow morning, you can purchase tickets. You need to bring your green postseason ticket A, and then from 11.30, tickets will be sold to the general public. There are the numbers on Garrison. Reggie Rogers on the sweep. Out to the 39-yard line. Fumble. Aztecs say they have it. Will this be the seventh turnover for the Lobos tonight? I'm not sure that the line judge Six. saw it. But the ball was stolen from Reggie out of Reggie. It wasn't a fumble. The ball was stolen.
Hicks actually took the ball out. If we see a replay of this, I think we'll see that the ball was just taken out of Reggie Rogers' arms. And it occurred right in front of the line judge, but the line judge did not see the steal. Talk about basketball. Yeah, that was taken away. They're showing it on the scoreboard right here, and they want the officials to look at it. And the officials say, let's just start the clock, guys. You're up by 24. All right, now let's see this now steal. We're see it. Now watch Hicks, number eight, right there. Watch. That's Mario Mitchell that stripped it. Mario Mitchell, excuse me. He did his impersonation of Harold Hicks on that play. Uh, I don't believe, I don't agree with Denny Stoll's tantrum. I, big deal. So somebody stole the ball. You're ahead 44 to 46 to 22 in the fourth quarter. Seven minutes to go. It's hard to keep track if you don't yeah. have your pocket computer with you. Yeah. That's an unnecessary tantrum. First and 10 New Mexico on a run by Reggie Rogers. It's that time of the year where frustrations run high and Back to pass, Garrison. Over the middle, Mathis takes it, and he is face-masked and brought to the turf. I guess he wasn't face-masked. Boy, he's down and shaken up a bit. I guess they got him by the throat, they tell us. That particular play has been the one that early in the season would break. And so there, San Diego State's defense is very conscious of that, and they're looking for that pass play. Terrence is safer by going on a deep route than trying to cross in front of the linebackers here. Now watch how immediately he will be hit here. Watch. That's Mario Mitchell again. This guy's everywhere. He didn't get the face mask. It doesn't look like. Mm -hmm. Kind of cuffed him underneath the chin and drove him to the turf. Would, would collared be the right verb uh, that's there? That's much better than what I used. <laughs> Terrence having a good night. That young man there right there for five weeks of this season led the nation in all-purpose yardage. And the guy who's doing it right now, Tim Green is the uh, from Notre Dame, is the odds-on favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. Notre Dame upset today by the Nittany Lions. Stoles is still disgusted over the not getting credited with that steal. Second down and six, we'll call it. In Aztec territory, downfield complete. Mario Mitchell with another tackle, and the Lobos want a penalty marker. A near confrontation. And now they're roughing it up down on the sidelines, and the officials will break things up. Reception was made by Kerry Mall, who came into the contest for Terrence Mathis, went right out and caught his first opportunity. Mario Mitchell, for all his talent and skills, which are considerable, is losing control of himself right here. And, uh, you know, they, he's doing it in the wrong place. In front, of, He's doing it in front of the wrong bench, that's for sure. At the 34-yard line of San Diego State, first and 10 for the Lobos. Barry Garrison, straight back to pass it. Scrambling now. Downfield with it. Incomplete. Reggie Rogers, after blocking, tried to sneak out into the secondary, but he was picked up, and it'll be second and ten for the Lobos. Good job by Garrison of getting, uh, by, by throwing the ball and averting the loss. He was under extreme pressure there. One of the, uh, another reason Mario Mitchell's mad is because all of those completions have been to his the man he's been covering. You saw the time remaining, just under seven minutes. Drop play to Scott Howard, ball bobbled, he's dropped for a loss. Now this might be a possibility for a field goal. Walsh would have to boot at about 55 yards. What's his range like? Uh, <laughs> well, add 10 yards on to this. For about 37, 47, well, add seven onto this. This would be a 45, 55-yarder. Jim, I don't know. We now, in our booth, feel some wind. In fact, the, the flag is, is right in the Lobos' faces right now. Of course, they're down lower than we are. It could be swirling. We'll see what happens on third down. Garrison scrambling. And now with room upfield. 
across the 30 and very close to the first down marker inside the 25-yard line. So they've got it in field goal range, at least, and Garrison very close to the first and 10, but trailing 46-22 with 5.57 to go. You probably don't even think about that. You go ahead and try to get sure. the touchdown. If this isn't enough for the touchdown, I'm sure they'll go for it on fourth down. It's close enough. Nice bit of scrambling here by number 11, Barry Garrison. Except if you're a youngster watching this and your quarterback's scrambling, get that ball tucked into your arm a little bit better there. And also when they, you know they're going to get you. Slide. <laughs> slide. Slide, Kelly, slide. Just that short of the first. Fourth and inches. I wanted a play action fake and go for the marbles here, huh? A gamble, but one that might pay off. Only one tight end in the game. Not what you would call your power running formation. Quarterback sneak, and Garrison rides the hip of Scott Maney to get it, but a penalty marker thrown, and Mike Henderson arguing. He says, hey, they drew us offsides. Offside signal against the Aztecs. Well, that'll get him the first down. Who's Offside the defense. The first down. Doug Tool. San Diego State's been penalized 55 yards now in the contest. Denny Stoll's yelling at the officials. At the 19 of San Diego State, first and 10 for the Lobos. Put running backs behind Barry Garrison. Barry to throw. Scrambling. They don't get him. He fires it complete to Mike Henderson. And Henderson is just outside the 10. They're going to mark him down at the 12-yard line. Nice little fingertip catch that time by the freshman Mike Henderson. And Barry Garrison is showing some elusiveness here that he hasn't shown us much of or as much of in the past. Look at all those black shirts around him. Now here he comes towards your camera. Nice flip pass to Mike Henderson. Sam Taylor in there helps him a little bit. Takes out one of those guys. The official mark inside the 13 yard line. Second down there for New Mexico. This is Lobo football on KGSW TV 14, Albuquerque, New Mexico. To Terrence Mathis, he could be in. Touchdown, Lobos. Roy Mathis getting an idea how he can really accelerate and turn up field. He doesn't fool around. He heads up field. That's what you're supposed to do. And Barry Garrison happy and sore the Lobos as this will be their biggest ta point total on the road this year. And this is almost a variation of the shovel pass. It's a short screen, but Mathis is crossing the middle. Boy, he can streak in when he gets the ball, and he can smell that goal line and get across. What acceleration he has. Now watch when he turns to his left and turns up field. Lobos are going for two. Garrison has now passed for 277 yards. And fine play by Terrence Mathis. Lobos want two, Garrison to throw, dumps it off, and they get the two to Reggie Rogers. So the Lobos pick up a pair more, and with 4.39 remaining in a football game, it's the San Diego State University Aztecs 46, the New Mexico Lobos 30. We'll be right back. There is more competition for business from the insurance companies uh, directed toward agents like ourselves, and this gives us more uh, leverage in dealing for our clients in uh, providing the types of coverages they need, the payment options that they would like to have, and, uh, and of course, lower prices. It's a better time for the buyer right now. 
The spirit of Ajax keeps shining through with unbeatable prices. Take this brand new single wide starting at just $126 per month. Only Ajax can offer such great prices like luxurious double wides from just $253 per month. Our spirit will not be beat. To prove it, huge triple wides start at $398 per month. At Ajax Factory Outlet, we guarantee the lowest possible prices and the largest inventory. Take I-40 West to the top of Nine Mile Hill and exit 149. At Ajax, we've got the spirit and it shows. Be sure to join us next Saturday afternoon for the Lobos' final game of the football season. They'll take on the Arkansas Razorbacks at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Kickoff will be live at noon right here on KGSW TV 14, your Lobo sports station. 46-30, San Diego State leading it. Four minutes, 39 seconds remaining in the football game. Terrence Mathis, seven catches tonight, 61 yards and a touchdown. Fair catch called for out there by Monty Kilbreth around the 19-yard line. You know, they weren't really, they didn't have a wedge return plan. I think they were expecting the onside kick. So there was no wedge, and Gilbreth fair caught the ball, which they're entitled to do on a kickoff. And he'll place it at the 18-yard line. We'll see if San Diego State is content to run the football and milk the clock, or if they want to go up top. Todd Santos will finish the ball game at the throttle for San Diego State. They're going to run it. This is Booker trying to get outside, and he does, and that's about three yards. Made something out of nothing. It'll be second and seven for San Diego State. Host to Lobos over there on the stop, including Steve Webster. He had to carry Torrey Edwards, 47, with him. Torrey had a hold of his shirt behind him as he tried to turn the corner. That's the only the three-yard gain. Santos, not finished tonight, but maybe won't throw again. Has passed for 3,872 yards a season. That's fifth best all-time in the NCAA Division I annals. And another running play, and Booker, not much there. Way Orison and Brian McCabe. One hit him high, one hit him low. Teacuped him, as they like to say. But right here, Jim, it, it's no longer simply being charitable. It's the wise thing to do, the appropriate thing to do, to try to run the ball and kill this clock while they still have a lead. Although third and eight, you, might, you could expect a pass here. Out of the shotgun, Santos straight back. Lots of time, there's a receiver. Carey, Reed Martin with a first and 10 out around the 31 yard line. Well, we were seeing a tight end Dave Schlick quite a bit, but now Reed Martin back in there seeing some action. And he's just awfully difficult to cover one for one on one. There he is, number 85. Chris Houston was the man trying to do it there. Actually had position on him, but he wasn't quite in front enough to uh, to prevent the pass completion. Three minutes to go, Santos. First and ten is his own 32. Going deep downfield, Clewis on the coverage, complete. That'll take it to the Lobo 38-yard line. The pass was right on the money, and the catch made by D'Angelo Mitchell. Penalty marker down on the play. This is what Sanis does best. Lob the long pass. There is a flag on the field, and we would expect it to be roughing the passer. They'll just tack that on. There you see the signal. That'll bring it all the way about the 23 or 22 yard line. Well, the Aztecs may be looking to go into the 50s. There's the over-the-shoulder completion. That ball is laid in there absolutely perfectly. Well, we've seen two-point conversions on both sides. And the Aztecs converging on the end zone and leading handily 46-30 with 2.52 to go. Santos to throw. Over the middle complete. Carey Reed Martin near a first down and a penalty marker thrown. It'll probably be a face mask, which will make it first and goal to go inside the 10 of the New Mexico Lobos. There's Kerry Reed Martin. Boy. 
a good thing that he's not of the female persuasion and got married, he'd have double dashes there, huh? <laughs> In these days of... Third uh, dash, five dash, yards, dash, dash. air, maybe, first down. Maybe they'd quit using hyphens and just put commas in that situation. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Nice grab by Martin. Yeah. Chris Houston, the unenviable job of trying to stay with him again. Didn't see the face mask. He did have a hold of the back of his shirt. Mike Shepard uh, roaming the sideline. There's Denny Stoles. First and goal to go at the eight. Santos scrambles away. Fires complete. And dumped outside around the two-yard line. Troy Reed. Reed blocked and then kind of just shuffled over into the flat of Santos ad-lib. That's just two athletes ad-libbing, and it paid off pretty well for San Diego State. You're right, that was a good play by Reed, who read as Santos was forced out of the pocket. He got into that flat, became the available receiver. Santos found him, dumped him the ball. Now, the Lobos have been have performed well in close in goal line defense against the run. Will San Diego State throw it? Let's see. It's a running formation. Second and goal to go at the Lobo 2. They're going to show the pass. They dump it off. Carey, Reed, Martin, touchdown. Bobbled it, got it back. And San Diego State moves to 52 on the scoreboard. Let's see if they go for two here. Carey, <laughs> Reed, Martin, I believe that was his fourth catch on this drive. But uh, it shows what an athlete he is. He's the guy that's been their money receiver for the last two ball games. Look at that, the bobble still hangs on. Troy Clewis really isn't much you can do with that except get to the ball in his coverage. Tyler Ackerson, who has been so accurate that he hasn't missed an extra point all season, will not miss it on his last attempt of 87. It's 53 to 30, San Diego State on top. We have two minutes and 11 seconds remaining, and Santos now, in his career at San Diego State, has passed for 11,425 yards. You see Kerry Reed Martin and his numbers on the evening here at Jack Murphy Stadium. And Lobos will see another, another time of Kerry Reed Martin. He is just a junior, unless he, for some reason, doesn't uh, make it to Albuquerque next year. He's a good one. I think he has a future as a professional football player as well. Mike Shepard's a little more despondent now. Things looked uh, fairly good there when the Lobos got back in the game late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, but once again, the, Az the Aztecs are prevailing. Ackerson teeing it up at the 35-yard line. There he is. A field goal and numerous extra points tonight. I wonder what it's like to kick so many extra points you can't remember how many you kicked. Deep into the end zone and the Lobos will start at their own 20 yard line. They will retire the jersey of Todd Santos after this football game tonight. It has been declared Todd Santos Day here in San Diego, California. And the sports information people here at San Diego State has prepared a handsome brochure to celebrate that. Photos uh, included. Todd Santos Day. Well, I'd say he earned it. Certainly. I'd say he earned it. By golly, to he's broken virtually every record there is to be broken, every passing mark in the NCAA, so... Lobos clipped on the kickoff, although they never returned it. Dead ball. I don't First think I've seen that in a while. Here. First down. Have you seen that in a while? No. <laughs> Clipping on a kick, you never returned. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> well, if it feels good, do it at this point. 53 to 30. There's Todd Sanis with his helmet off. Young man has a bright future. He's not done playing his football yet. Little running play for the Lobos. And uh, they get out to around the 13-yard line that time with Reggie Rogers on the carry. 
San Diego State will finish the season five up and six down. A major disappointment for the defending Western Athletic Conference champs. We want to congratulate Wyoming. They beat UTEP handily this afternoon, and so Wyoming will go to the Holiday Bowl. A record of nine and two with one game remaining in the job Paul Roach and his entire staff did at Wyoming this year is really a story. Nice crunching hit that time by Chuck Nixon. Wyoming was picked by many to be in the bottom of the echelon in the Western Athletic Conference, but they proved to be much better than everyone thought. Nice reception here by Scott Howard. I agree with you. In fact, I believe, Jim, that Wyoming is the best team we have seen this year. We're yet to see Arkansas. We will see them this Saturday. But I am i don't think Arkansas will be much of a better team than Wyoming was. Little dump off to Terrence Mathis, who slips and skids on the turf around the 26-yard line in New Mexico territory. We're down to 56 seconds and the counting remaining in the football game. Lobos fall to 0 and 10. Matches the winless record. Timeout called here. That campaign in 1968? 68, 68 was the season. You know, of course, if the Lobos can't win next Saturday, though, they will surpass that mark. Yeah. Got a letter from a guy by the name of Harvey Whitehill, real Rancho resident, who uh, said that he played on the 1932 Lobo football team, which not only was winless, but only scored 18 points the entire season. But he hastens to remind me that on that team were some who played on the 1934 Lobo team, which was the first conference championship team that the Lobos fielded. So let's hope that uh, in, the, in a couple of year or a couple of years from now, some of these younger players who are suffering through this season can look back from a position of change and say, hey, I remember that, but here we are champions. So. That's the challenge. Garrison gets his first down, and Mathis fumbles a football, but he was down. The whistle had blown at the 39-yard line. They will stop the clock while they move the chain gang ahead. With 47 seconds remaining in the football game. Lobo's going without a huddle now. Garrison out of the shotgun. Lots of time, downfield, picked off. Well, that's a fine interception by John Wesselman. Indeed it was. He had to go high for that. Garrison throws his fifth interception of the evening. Barry, who had a good night tonight, however, will have the dubious honor of firing five interceptions twice in one season. Well, let me say, explain in some regards that's all that the Lobos really have as offensive weapons and when the opponent knows you have to throw uh, it makes it all that much more difficult and now, I, I don't think Barry ought to feel sorry for throwing five interceptions tonight or any other night when your opponents know know that's what you have to do and by the way Todd Santos you see him leaving the field now finally <laughs> What a career he's had. What a career. Standing ovation here. Well, you hear people tell you the limitations he has. He finishes the night 23 of 31. A total of four touchdown passes and 373 yards. What a way to go out. And on top of all that, the Aztecs were penalized for delay of the game. Oh, well, Brad Platt is the new quarterback. They'll run it and run out the clock. Here's the running play. And the Aztecs getting quite a bit on this. They could be gone for six. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Checking into the ball game was Lamont Parks. He got outside and nearly broke it. All right, Lamont Parks, 31. Here's a fresh uniform in there. He's well-rested. In fact, he's trying to keep from freezing on the sidelines. It's a cool night, so here he is. gets his chance. Nice blocking out in front. Trying to thread the sideline. Oh, Lamont, you were within 70 yards of a TD. Aztecs, I don't believe, will try to throw it here. 
They're going to run it. Lamont will try it again. And gets to the 10-yard line. That should be the last play of the football game. If this was another opponent we played this year, they'd call timeout and kick a field goal. <laughs> it will be the last play. Congratulations to Todd Sanis on a brilliant career. And the Aztecs beat New Mexico tonight, 53 to 30. For San Diego State, they finish the season at five and six. The Lobos go to nothing in 10, play Arkansas next Saturday. We have it live at noon. We'll be back and wrap things up from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California. But first we'll pause your final score. The Aztecs 53. Now we're gonna stay here and wrap it up. Jim Lawwell here on behalf of Gary Ness saying so long until next Saturday or whenever. Here's hoping that today and every day your team's a winner. That final one more time as you see the two head coaches exchanging uh, pleasantries. 53-30, San Diego State beats the New Mexico Lobos. Lobo football on Channel 14 was brought to you in part by... Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing.